Hi, everyone. Very good morning to all of you. Today, 24th of March, is the World Tuberculosis Day. On behalf of the National Program for Tuberculosis Control and Chest Diseases, let us have the privilege to welcome you to the National Commemoration of the World Tuberculosis Day 2022. ஒழுங்கு செய்யப்பட்டிருக்கும் இரண்டாயிரத்தி இருபத்தி இரண்டாம் வருடத்தின் சர்வதேச காச நோய் தினமான இன்று காச நோயினை ஒழிப்பதற்காக முதலிடுவோம் உயிர்களை காப்போம் என்ற துணைப்பொருளில் அனுஷ்டிக்கப்படுகின்றது இந்நிகழ்விற்கு வருகை தந்திருக்கும் அதிதிகள் முக்கியஸ்தர்கள் பெற்றோர்கள் மாணவர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் காலை வாழ்த்துக்கள் அனைவரையும் அன்புடன் வரவேற்கிறோம் முலின்ம சாம்பிரதாய கோலவ பொல்தல் பகன் சிறு தலைமை அவஸ்தாவாய்மே அடுத்ததாக மங்கள விளக்கேற்றும் நிகழ்வு நடைபெற இருக்கின்றது லைட் ட்ரெடிஷனல் ஆயில் லேம்ப் லெட் அஸ் ஹேவ் த ப்ரிவிலேஜ் டு கார்டியலி இன்வைட் டெபியூட்டி டிரெக்டர் ஜெனரல் பப்ளிக் ஹெல்த் சர்வீசஸ் டாக்டர் எஸ் என் மானல் டிரெக்டர் நேஷனல் ப்ரோக்ராம் ஃபார் டியூபர்க்யூலோசிஸ் கண்ட்ரோல் அண்ட் செஸ் டிசீசஸ் டாக்டர் எச் டி பி ஹேரக் கன்சல்டன்ட் கம்யூனிகேஷன் NPTCCD, Dr. Mrs. Konali Rajapaksha, represent in the Sri Lanka Medical Association, Vice President Dr. Suranta Perra, Consultant Pediatrician, and represent in the Professional Colleges, College of Pulmonologists, College of Pediatrics, and College of Microbiologists of Sri Lanka. Let us have the privilege to invite one of the consultant doctors to represent their relevant colleges. and also dr mrs amali sena naik activity coordinator of the national tb day event emenna mevara loka sharoga dinaya thema kota pavatthana labena chitra tarangavali sandaha idiripattunu ek daru vekta demo pekta apata chitra therim katiyata sandaha namasara sahayogya club adun kolumba adhyapana kalapaye guru padeshaka rohan uggada mahatata நிகழ்வினை அங்குரார்ப்பணம் செய்யும் முகமாக சுடர் தேர்வம் ஏற்றி வைப்பதற்காக செயற்திட்டத்தினால் நடாத்தப்பட்ட பாடசாலை மாணவர்களுக்கான சித்திர போட்டியின் வெற்றியாளர் ஒருவரையும் பெற்றோர்கள் சார்பாக ஒருவரையும் அழைக்கிறோம் we also would like to cordially invite one representative from the world health organization who are present here today and deputy director of national program for tuberculosis control and chest diseases dr mrs nirupa pallavat
Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, let us please raise for the national anthem. Thank you very much. Let us have the pleasure to invite the following guests to the head table. Deputy Director General, Public Health Services 1, Dr. S. M. Arnold. Director, National Program for Tuberculosis Control and Chest Diseases, Dr. H. D. B. Herath. Dear sir, Proceed for the head table, please. And also representing the Sri Lanka Medical Association Vice President, Dr. Suranta Pereira, consultant pediatrician. Thank you. Let me have the privilege to invite Dr. H. D. B. Herath, Director, National Program for Tuberculosis and Tuberculosis Control and Chest Diseases, to deliver the welcome address. Over to you, sir. Subha Udasana Siridhanathana. Sauke Amatian say Mahajana Sauke Seva, Pilibanda, Neoji Sauke Seva, General Mahindra Anand Matimani, Sri Lanka, Vaidi Sangame, Pasabapati, Suran Pereira Matitumani, Feminist Sitna, Siluma Denagin, Mulima Avatra, Ila Sitina, Pratamem, 
අද මේ සමරණු ලබන්නේ ලෝකයේ පුරාම ලෝක සෞඛ්‍ය සංවිධානයේ විසින් ප්‍රකාශයට පත් කරන ලදුව සෑම වසරකම අපි අනුස්මරණය කරන එහෙමත් නැත්නම් සමරණ ලෝක ක්ෂය රෝග දිනය මාර්තු මස 24 වන අද දිනට යෙදීම පිළිබඳව ඒ නිසා ඒ මෙම අවස්ථාව සනිටුහන් කරමින් අද ජාතික වශයෙන් පැවැත්වෙන මෙම අවස්ථාවට පැමිණි සමුන්නාන්සේලා පිළිගැනීමට අවස්ථාව ලැබීම පිළිබඳව මම ඉතාමත් සන්තෝෂ වෙනවා මේ අවස්ථාවට මේ දක්වා පැමිණ නොසිටියත් මෙහි ප්‍රධාන අමුත්තා හැටියට අප විසින් ආරාධනය කරලා තියෙන ඒ වගේම ඉදිරියේදී අප වෙත අපමිනේ කියලා බලාපොරොත්තු වෙන සෞඛ්‍ය අමාත්‍යාංශයේ මහජන සෞඛ්‍ය සේවා පිළිබඳ අතිරේක ලේකම් වෛද්‍ය ලක්ෂ්මී සෝමතුංග මැතිනිය මම හිතනවා අපිට ඉදිරියේදී පැමිණේ කියලා මම එතුමිය මේ අවස්ථාවේ ඊටමත් සාදරයෙන් පිළිගන්නවා එතුමියේ පැමිණීම බලාපොරොත්තු වෙන ඒ වගේම සෞඛ්‍ය අමාත්‍යාංශයේ මහජන සෞඛ්‍ය සේවා පිළිබඳ නියෝජ්‍ය සෞඛ්‍ය සේවා අධ්‍යක්ෂ ජනරාල් විශේෂඥ වෛද්‍ය එස් එම් ආනල් මැතිතුමා ඔබතුමා තමා සෞඛ්‍ය අංශයේ මහජන සෞඛ්‍ය සේවා ක්ෂය රෝග මර්ධනයේ පමණක් නොව අනිකුත් රෝග මර්ධන ක්‍රියාවලියන් සියල්ලටමත් ඒ වගේම මේ දිනවල අපි කවුරුත් කටයුතු කරන කොවිඩ් මර්ධන කටයුතු වලදී ඒ මහජන සෞඛ්‍ය ක්ෂේත්‍රයේ නායකත්වය ලබා දෙන්නේ ඔබතුමාගේ මේ වටිනා කාලය අද මේ අවස්ථාව වෙනුවෙන් යොමු කිරීම පිළිබඳව ස්තුතිවන්ත වෙමින් මෙහි පැමිණීම ඉතාමත්ම අපිට ගෞරවයක් ලෙස සලකමින් ඔබතුමාව සාදරයෙන් පිළිගන්නවා ඒ වගේම තමා මෙම අවස්ථාවට මේ උත්සවයේ සාකතා මේ සැමරීම සඳහා දායකත්වයේ දුන්න ප්‍රධානම ආයතනයේ තමා ශ්‍රී ලංකා වෛද්‍ය සංගමය මේ සංගමයේ සභාපතිතුමා හැටියට මා මිත්‍ර මහාචාර්ය සමත් ධර්මරත්න මැතිතුමා ඉන්නවා එතුමා නුවර ඉන්න නිසා මම හිතේ එතුමා නියෝජනය කරමින් ශ්‍රී ලංකා වෛද්‍ය සංගමයේ උපසභාපති විශේෂඥ වෛද්‍ය සුරන්ත පෙරේරා මැතිතුමා මේ අවස්ථාවට පැමිණ සිටිනවා ශ්‍රී ලංකා වෛද්‍ය සංගමය ක්ෂය රෝග මර්ධන කටයුතු සඳහා අපිට මීට පෙර වසරවලදී ලබා දුන්නු සහයෝගය අති මහත් ඉදිරියේදී අපි ලොකු බලාපොරොත්තු තියෙනවා එතුමන්ලාගේ සහාය ලබා ගැනීමට ඒක සාක්ෂාත් කර ගැනීමෙන් අද මේ අවස්ථාවට පැමිණි ඔබතුමාවත් මම ඊටමත්ම සාදරයෙන් පිළිගන්නවා ඒ වගේම අපේ ක්ෂය රෝග මර්ධන ක්‍රියාවලියේදී ප්‍රධාන විද්වත් ආයතන ගණනාවක් එක්ක අපි කටයුතු කරනවා එයිනුත් මුල් තැනම සිටින ආයතන කීපයක් තියෙනවා ඒ තමා ශ්වසන රෝග විශේෂඥවරුන් සම්බන්ධ වරුන්ගේ තියෙන විද්වත් සංගමය කියලා තියෙනවා කොලෙජ් ඔෆ් පර්මනලොජිස්ට් ඔෆ් ශ්‍රී ලංකා ඒ වගේම ශුද්‍ර ජීව වෛද්‍ය විද්‍යාඥින්ගේ විද්වත් සංගමය තියෙනවා කොලෙජ් ඔෆ් මයික්‍රොබයලොජිස්ට් ඔෆ් ශ්‍රී ලංකා ඒ වගේම ප්‍රජා සෞඛ්‍ය විශේෂඥ වෛද්‍යවරුන්ගේ විද්වත් සංගමය තියෙනවා කොලෙජ් ඔෆ් කමියුනිටි ප්‍රොසිෂන්ස් ඔෆ් ශ්‍රී ලංකා මේ ආයතන වල සභාපතිවරුන් හෝ ඔවුන් නියෝජනය කරමින් මේ ස්ථානයට පැමිණි සියලුම වෛද්‍යවරුන් සහ අනිකුත් නියෝජිතයින් මේ අවස්ථාවේ මම පිළිගන්නවා ඒ වගේම මේ විද්‍යා ආයතන වලට අමතරව අනිකුත් සියලුම වෛද්‍ය විද්‍යාවට සම්බන්ධ විවිධ විද්වත් ආයතන අපිත් එක්ක කටයුතු කරනවා මම නම් සඳහන් කර නැතත් ඒ ආයතන පිළිග නියෝජනය කරමින් මේ අවස්ථාවට පැමිණි අනික් සියලුම නියෝජිතයනුත් මම පිළිගන්නවා ඒ වගේම මේ ක්ෂය රෝග මර්ධන කටයුතු වලදී කොළඹ නගර සභාව තාමත්ම දැඩි වෙහෙසක් කර ගනිමින් මේ රෝගය පාලනය කර ගැනීම සඳහා කටයුතු කරනවා මෙහිදී මූලිකත්වය ලබා දෙන කොළඹ නගර සභාවේ ප්‍රධාන සෞඛ්‍ය වෛද්‍ය නිලධාරී රුවන් විජේමුණි වෛද්‍යතුමා මේ අවස්ථාවට පැමිණ සිටිනවා ඔබතුමාවත් මම ඉතාමත්ම සාදරයෙන් පිළිගන්නවා ඒ වගේම මේ අද මේ ලෝක ක්ෂය රෝග දිනය ප්‍රකාශයට පත් කරේ ලෝක සෞඛ්‍ය සංවිධානයේ මගින් ලෝක සෞඛ්‍ය සංවිධානයේ ශ්‍රී ලංකා මේ කාර්යාලය තිබෙනවා ඒ කාර්යාලය නියෝජනය කරමින් මේ ස්ථානයට පැමිණි විශේෂඥ වෛද්‍ය ප්‍රශිලා සමරවීර මැතිනිය සහ අනිකුත් කණ්ඩායමේ සාමාජිකයින් සියලු දිනාමත් මම මේ අවස්ථාවේ පිළිගන්නවා ඔවුන් අමතරව මං හිතනවා අද අපේ සිටින අමුත්තන් ඒ තමා අද මේ 
උත්සවයේ සැරසීම සඳහා අපිට දායකත්වය ලබා දෙමින් මේ අවස්ථාවට පැමිණි මේ දරු දැරියන් නම් වශයෙන් මම සඳහන් කරේ නැති වුණාට දහස් ගණනක් දරු දැරියන් සහභාගී වුණු චිත්‍ර තරගයකින් ඉහෙලින්ම දක්ෂකම් පාපු මේ දරු දැරියන් දූපුතුන් සියලු දෙනාම ක්ෂාරෝග මර්ධන ව්‍යාපාරයේ වැඩසටහන වෙනුවෙන් ඉතාමත්ම සාදරයෙන් අද මේ අවස්ථාවට පිළිගන්නවා ඒ වගේම ඒ දරු දැරියන්ට ධෛර්ය දුන්නු ඒ අයට මග පෙන්නපු ඒ වගේම ඒ අය සමග මේ ස්ථානයට පැමිණි දෙමෝපියන් ගුරුවරු මේ නම් ඒ අය ඒ සියලු දෙනාමත් මං හිතනවා මේ අවස්ථාවේදී ඊටා සාදරයෙන් පිළිගන්නවා ඒ වගේම මෙම චිත්‍ර තරගය සහ අනිකුත් කටයුතු පාසල් අර අතර සම්බන්ධතාවය පවත්වා ගැනීම සඳහා සෞඛ්‍ය අමාත්‍යාංශය හා අධ්‍යාපන අමාත්‍යාංශය බොහොම කිට්ටුවෙන් වැඩ කරා ඒ කටයුත්තට සහාය දුන්නු අධ්‍යාපන අමාත්‍යාංශය නියෝජනය කරමින් මේ අවස්ථාවට පැමිණි සියලු දෙනාමත් මම මේ අවස්ථාවේ සාදරයෙන් පිළිගන්නවා මේ වැඩ කටයුත්තේදී අපිට මේ මෙවැනි වැඩසටහනක් කිරීම හරහා ක්ෂය රෝග පිළිබඳ පණි උඩේ ජනතාවට ලබා දෙන්නවා අපිට මාධ්‍යයේ සහය අත්‍යවශ්‍යයි මේ කටයුත්ත සඳහා අපිට මෙතනට පැමිණි මාධ්‍ය සහෘදයන් සියලු දෙනාමත් මං අපි මේ අවස්ථාවේ පිළිගත යුතුයි ඒ වගේම අවසාන වශයෙන් මෙම කටයුත්තට බර මහන්සියලා වැඩ කරපු ශාරෝග මර්ධන වැඩසටහනේ කාර්ය මණ්ඩලයත් ඒ වගේම ශ්‍රී ලංකා වෛද්‍ය සංගමයේ කාර්ය මණ්ඩලයත් ඇතුළු මම නම සඳහන් කරපු නැති වුණත් මේකට සහභාගී වෙන සියලු දෙනාම ඉතාමත් සාදරයෙන් පිළිගනිමින් ඉදිරියේදී කරගෙන යන මේ වැඩසටහන සර්ව ප්‍රකාරයෙන් සාර්ථක වේවා කියලා ප්‍රාර්ථනා කරමින් මම නිහඬ වෙනවා බොහොම ස්තුතියි බොහොම ස්තුතියි සර් 2022 ශෛලෝක ශෛලෝක දිනේ නිමිත්තෙන් ගරු අග්‍රාමාත්‍ය තුමන් සහ අතිගරු ජනාධිපතිතුමන් ඉතින් නිකුත් කරන ලද පණි විදිය ප්‍රකාශයට පත් කිරීමේ අවස්ථාවයි මේ जनाधिपतिमंद मम्मे अवस्थावेदी गरु अग्रमा विसी प्रकाश ये प्रकाशे इंग्रीसी पारवर्तने ये पिलिबंध सिंगल सा दमल पारवर्तने मेहि सदन करेशन एट टाइम वेन एपिडमिक्स आर बीइंग वाइडली डिस्क इट इज टाइमली फॉर अस श्रीलंक श्रीलंक टू रियलाइज द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ मिनिमाइजिंग द रिस्क and the spread of global tuberculosis so as to gain health social and economic benefits as millions of people around the world die from tuberculosis tuberculosis and are being affected by various other diseases the direct and indirect impact on the social and economic conditions of those countries are enormous although Sri Lanka has managed to keep the rate of tuberculosis at a low level when considering the South Asian region. It faces constant challenges due to its important position to neighboring countries and in tourism as well as global development. We have successfully controlled malaria, smallpox and measles, setting an example to developing and developed countries around the world. we have also achieved a highly satisfactory level in containing the covid-19 pandemic sri lanka with a comprehensive treatment and community health care system that is widely and freely accessible to all and a top literacy rate has uh, has the potential to eradicate tuberculosis very soon therefore let us unite in the national mission of eradicating tuberculosis 
on our journey towards a prosperous country that has been praised and respected by the world community for successfully overcoming various challenges throughout the history. On World Tuberculosis Day, we are determined to achieve the above objectives expeditiously. And as we have an extensive uh, island-wide diagnostic and treatment services established in Sri Lanka. Mahinda Rajapaksa, Prime Minister, Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka. Mr. Sister, me langata atigaru janadi patraman vechin yenalada panivide prakashita patrikin sandaha by the HDB herat matraman eta aradhana kar sitin. Navatat garu atigaru janadi patrama ge prakashi ingrisi pita patramama me kivanoa amantana singala saha demala pita patmetana balaganda pulwa. Message. Tuberculosis has become a global infection forcing a major health, economic, and social impact on people around the world. According to the global data, around 10 million individuals in the world suffer from acute tuberculosis. In Sri Lanka, annually around 10,000 individuals are diagnosed with TB. According to the opinions of experts, the mortality due to tub tub uh, tuberculosis, either by its direct or indirect effects, is significantly high compared to the deaths due to any other infectious disease. The impact of tuberculosis on global economy is huge. Therefore, uh, attention should be paid to the socio-economic factors that underline tuberculosis. Improving the public awareness about the, uh, about the imperative need to control the disease will empower them to assist and, and be vigilant on the diagnosis, treatment, and follow-up activities. I eagerly look forward to the engagement of fellow Sri Lankans to reach the TB's eradication target by the year 2035 by their commitment to follow the relevant guidelines. The Sri Lankan health system is strengthened with highly skilled staff, specialists, modern molecular biological techniques, and freely delivered curative and public health services to support its mission. The country is also empowered with government's commitment and prioritized policies, as well as collaborating with uh, different stakeholders in the government, provincial level, and the private sector together reaching the grassroots level of the society to address the background socio-economic factors associated with TB. Utilizing local, regional, and international experiences in the fight against the, uh, against the global epidemics, let's determine to move forward with a sustainable responsibility for the eradication of tuberculosis in Sri Lanka in the future. I wish you a healthy and prosperous future. Gotabe Rajapaksa, March, uh, March 21st, 2023. Thank you very much, sir. Now, let me have the honor to invite, on behalf of the Sri Lanka Medical Association, to deliver a short lecture. Dr. Suranta Perra, the Vice President of Sri Lanka Medical Association, as well as he's a consultant pediatrician. Over to you, sir. Good morning to all of you. I think it's a short uh, speech and uh, distinguished uh, head table and uh, distinguished guest, dear consultants and representative of all the colleges, associations, and dear parents and students. I'm privileged to speak to you. Today is a special day. TB control program has uh, organized this. And I'm thankful at the uh, start uh, for organizing this. And as the team says, illness to end TB and save lives. And all of us know, uh, this uh, March 24th is an important day because Robert Koch, who found the TB bacillus, uh, announced it to the world on this day. And thereafter, 
leaps and bounds with the time, the, how we diagnose the disease, how do we treat the disease, and how we keep the surveillance. And the system has improved a lot. And uh, all of us know, uh, on, a, on, a single day, on a single day, around uh, 4,000 people die because of tuberculosis, and uh, around uh, 30,000 to 28,000 people fall ill for TB. And then when I look at Sri Lankan data, annually we diagnose around 6,000 to 7,000 people. But the projected uh, expected number is 14,000. So we fall short of 6,000 to 7,000. This is where we have to find out, uh, we have to chase these people, find out uh, the, I think, uh, develop a mechanism to catch this, uh, uh, people without symptoms and uh, treat them. Uh, so that is very important. And uh, not only that, uh, we know we, with the HIV and with the global other scenarios like uh, different types of wars and then the people were displaced and uh, their eco economies were disrupted and with the poverty, all these factors uh, influence the spread of TB, especially HIV. And uh, now in the modern era and current context, we cannot forget COVID-19. Because of the COVID-19, there is an unforeseen burden on the health, uh, people who are engaging in health services. So <clears throat> all the activities are managed by them. So uh, doing TV programs also uh, another task we expect from them. That's one thing. And second thing is following COVID-19, we run into another catastrophe that is economic disasters. So the, in, this con, in this situation, how we fund these programs because our every program needs funding and then we have to pay the wages of these people who are involved. And then uh, we have to buy certain equipments and then uh, certain uh, other ancillary things we need to uh, carry out this lab test. So all things, will be uh, disrupted or at least uh, we have to cut cost and cost, uh, other, uh, take uh, some other measures to uh, face the situation. So not only we are saving, uh, uh, we are trying to improve our services to uh, achieve our goal to eliminate TB in 2035. We have to reorient our programs. We have to think differently. We had to innovate different ways to uh, face this situation. So that is very important thing. And uh, I'm very happy to see uh, when I enter this hall, uh, there were a lot of pictures. So what I felt is uh, we have seen many WHO and UNICEF booklets. So what I suggested to uh, Dr. Herat consultant also, uh, whether uh, we can publish a book uh, using these uh, photographs, uh, the pictures, and then write a simple uh, things about TB and uh, disseminate that knowledge among the school children. Uh, what country needs is currently, we need a change. So we have to change as citizens the way we think and how we approach problems. And, uh, we, uh, and we have to build skills very early. So where are the place, the schools? So I'm very happy to see these school children and the mothers as well as the teachers getting involved in the TB control program. So I think this is the way forward with that thought while thanking all the people who dedicated their time and the services to organize this uh, uh, program as well as future programs. Uh, I will stop. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for that uh, overview and the way forward thoughts. Next, uh, we would like to invite Dr. S.M. Arnold, Deputy Director General, Public Health Services, One Ministry of Health, to address the gathering. Over to you, sir. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, who have come here to commemorate the World TB Day 2022. So, uh, theme of the World TB Day is invest to end TB 
to save life. So in Sri Lanka, uh, I think uh, this theme from the inception, we are following and with our uh, control activities and the treatment activities, we have saved many, many lives. At the moment, we stand here uh, where after a two-year period of COVID and still going on and a challenge of continuing the programs. So during the past two years, if we take the statistics, uh, Sri Lanka has reported 7,258 TB cases in 2020 and 6,771 cases in 2021. So uh, as Dr. Suranta told that we actually, as per the WHO estimate, we fall, fall short around 50% of uh, TB cases undiagnosed. So that indicates a huge challenge. It indicates that large number of TB patients are undiagnosed in the community, which indicates that these patients can spread the disease widely in the community. And if we take uh, the districts, uh, we are having the huge challenge in the Colombo district where around 25% of the total caseloads are reported from the Colombo district. So uh, we are having a huge challenge. And with this COVID, we uh, see the results where the case de detection has reduced from 8,494 in 2019 to 7,258 in 2020 and 6,771 in 2021. So we, we see a gradual decline. So now, uh, as the health sector, we are having a huge challenge to take forward this program. So we have to do the catch-up program. We have to work extra hard uh, to bring the program in track. So as healthcare workers, uh, you are, we, are, we are here at this stage due to the dedication, the commitment of all the categories of healthcare staff, whether it's preventive or the curative sector. So now we will have to go forward from this with regard to the preventive activities. And in addition, that I'm very happy to see that this time uh, art competition was uh, organized and island-wide competition where school children were actively participating. So that is very, very important where you take this message to the community and uh, the school children, using school children for this purpose is a very good move where it, it takes a strong message to the home. So involving the school children in this regard is very, very important. So without the community support, actually, we will not be able to have a successful program, especially in a disease con condition like this, tuberculosis, where the patients themselves will have to come to the treatment center with their symptoms developing. And uh, especially the other thing is that the stigma associated with this disease condition. So through, through community, participation of the community, we can reduce this stigma as well as uh, patients coming at the early stage for the treatment and the preventive activities also will be very easy. So. I congratulate all the children who participated in this program as well as the winners uh, who have come here. So uh, congratulate on behalf of the Ministry of Health who actually you all are supporting our move to control TB. So finally, 
I request all our healthcare staff to get together and uh, move forward and achieve our target to uh, con successfully controlling TB and add con successful control of TB to our list of other successful controlling of the communicable diseases. Thank you. पवत्ल अवस्थावे मार्प नोयुक्तानी Yes, indeed. As you all are waiting the climax of this uh, important day, I suppose, let us have the honor to see all the winners. So we have a short uh, clip prepared how this process went on with the participation almost two uh, thousand not number of drawings sent by various students from all over the country, and let us see uh, a short clip on that. And followed by, I cordially invite to declare the names of winners by Dr. Mrs. Utpala Amar Singh, Consultant Committee Physician, Health Promotion Bureau. She was also a member of the judge panel of this in Owl Island Inter School Art Competition.
ඔබට පෙනෙන්නට ඇති පුංචි දරුවෙකු ළමා ජීවිතය අන්දවන්නට කෙතරම් අපහසුද ඔවුන් තනියෙන් සිත ජීවිතය අඳිනකොට දෙමෞපියන්ට පණිවුඩ දෙනකොට ඊටත් වඩා කෙතරම් සුන්දරද තාත්තා අම්මා වෙනස් වෙන්නේ නැන්ද මාමා අලුත් චර්යාවන් කරා යන්නේ පුංචි දුව පුංචි පුතා ඔවුන්ට පණිවිඩ දීම මගින් ඉතින් මේ පුංචි සිත්තරුන්ගේ ලස්සන තෙලිතුඩින් චිත්‍ර දෙදහසකටත් වඩා අප විනිශ්චය කරනු ලැබුවා ඒ දෙදහසේ හැම රේඛාවක්ම හැම පාඨක්ම දුවේ පුතේ ඔයාලා යොදාගෙන තිබිච්ච මේ නැන්දල මාමල හරිම ආසාවෙන් බැලුවා අපි හරියට දේවල් ඉගෙන ගත්තා ඔයාලා ඇඳලා තිබ්බ දේවල් වලින් ඒ වගේම සෞඛ්‍ය සෞඛ්‍ය පණිවිඩ ඉස්සරහට අරන් යන්න ඔයාලා ලොකු වෑයමක් ලොකු උත්සාහයක් දරලා තිබ්බා ඉතින් පළවෙනියෙන්ම ස්තුතියි ගුරු මහත්ම මහත්මීන්ට ඔවුන්ම මග ගන්වන ලද ඒ වගේම දෙමෝපියන්ට මෙතරම් දුෂ්කර කාල පරිච්ඡේදයක දරුවන්ව එකම අරමුණකට ගෙනල්ලා සෞඛ්‍ය පණිවිඩ ලොවට හඬගා කියන්නට ශ්‍රී රෝග මර්ධනය අපි දායක වෙන බව දැනුවත් වීම මේ සියල්ල ලොවට පණිවිඩ මගින් දෙන්නට උත්සාහ දරන්නට අපේ දරුවන් පෙළඹ වූ ඔබ සියලු දෙනාටම බෙහෙවින්ම ස්තුතිවන්ත වෙනවා ඒත් එක්කම අපිත් එක්ක හිටපු ජජින් පැනල් එක විශේෂයෙන්ම අපේ ගුරු උපදේශක චිත්‍ර උපදේශක මහතාට එස් එම් ටි රෝහන උග්ගොඩ මහතාට ඒ වගේම ශ්‍රේරෝගයාංශයේ විශේෂඥ වෛද්‍යවරුන් අධ්‍යක්ෂකතුමිය ඒ වගේම අපේ අධ්‍යක්ෂකතුමා නැතුළු සියලුම දෙනාටත් ඒ වගේම සෞඛ්‍ය ප්‍රවර්ධන කාර්ය අංශයට එකතු වෙලා හිටිය මමත් ඒ වගේම අපේ සෞඛ්‍ය අධ්‍යාපන නිලධාරීන් නැතුළු වෛද්‍ය කණ්ඩායමට හොඳයි අපි කාටද ආරාධනා කරන්නේ මේ ත්‍යාග ලබා දෙන්නට ඩොක්ටර් කසුන් එකතු වෙන්න Yes thank you madam to give out the awards prizes and medals i would cordially invite dr s m anal deputy director general public health services 1 dr h d b herat director national program for tuberculosis control and chest diseases and the vice president of sri lanka medical association dr surant perera and representing the college of pulmonologists Dr. Amita Fernando, consultant, respiratory physician. To start with the first round of awards. So there were arts from all over the country, from Trincomalee, from Jaffna, from Gaul, and even from everywhere. We got uh, arts from different languages. The, the children speaks different languages. So thank you very much to all the teachers from all over the country and the parents who have helped their small ones to draw very creatively these drawings. So I would like to invite our first winner. Iti napi ape palaveni kandayama eka දෙක ශ්‍රේණි සඳහා ආරාධනා කරන්නයි මේ සූදානම ඔබට මේ චිත්‍ර දකින්නට පුළුවන් ඉදිරියේ දමා තිබෙනවා ටෙඩීටත් BCG විදලා තියෙනවා මේ චිත්‍රයේ සඳහන් වෙලා තිබුණා පළමු ස්ථානයේ ගත්ත හරිම සුන්දර චිත්‍ර තිබුණා හොඳයි අපි තුන්වෙනි ස්ථානෙන් පටන් ගනිමු තුන්වන ස්ථානය දිනා ගනු ලබන්නේ අයනා සජීන් සිරිමාව බණ්ඩාරනායක විද්‍යාලය කොළඹ දෙවන ස්ථානය දිනා ගනු ලබන්නේ හස්‍යා සතින්ද්‍රී විජයවර්ධන ධර්මාශෝක විද්‍යාලය ගාල්ල ඉතාම සුන්දර චිත්‍රයක් ඔබට දකින්නට ලැබේවි එන්න දුවේ පළමු ස්ථානය දිනා ගනු ලබන්නේ එල් ජි නෙතුමි සංගීත් ජයරත්න එල් ජි එල් ජි නෙතුම් සංගීත් ජයරත්න පුතා විජය ජාතික පාසල මාතලේ පුතාගේ චිත්‍රය 
මේ පේන්න දාලා තියෙනවා නැන්දල මාමල ඔක්කොටම හරි ලස්සනයි मीलांगटे तुन्ना हातरे पाहा श्रेणी वाले दारुंगे आपी तोरा गन्ना लादे होंदे में चित्र आतरीन थमाई में थी ने नमो दारुंगे किया भी म बेना स्वान ने टपुलवान ऐनी सामे दे दाह हम होंदे में चित्र विधि हटे विविध किया भी म तुली नापी दुडवा इतने पुते और अलग चित्र लास्सनाई इतुरु आये की चित्र हरिम हैडाई प तुन्वन स्थाने दिनागनु लबाने चमालक नेतमितु कुमार कृष्ण देव विदुहल गाल देवन स्थाने दिनागनु लबाने सानुली विदुनिका जायसिंह मालिय देव बालिका विदुहल कुरुनेगल बालन केतरम लसन दैगे चित्रे हरी में प्रीतिमान दू तू अगे सहाती के लाभ नहीं हुआ थी काउंसलर डॉक्टर प्रीवेंट विथ इम्यूनाइजेशन हेल्दी लाइफस्टाइल पर्सनल हाइजीन ए सेरम के मत प्रदीय हरी में दानात मकाई अभी दानात मकाव हितु अत्यंत में था कि मैं का वाला क्वागा न पुलवा अंधी ने चोटी दूर सानुली विदुनिका जयसिंह मालिय देव बालिका विद्यालय होंदाई आप ही बालमु पालमु साने हाथ दही मिवान निकला सेनुली दंपाली विजय सिंह जावदन पुरे श्री राहुल बालिका विदुहले मालंबे एक बैठना पॉजिटिव अनेक पैटर्न नेगेटिव और बट होंडी नींद ने नाम बेहद लबागन आवश्यक प्रतिकार लबागनी में तुलन इतना मस्त सुंदर जीवित आकर्षक कल है कि पुंचियों एक ऐंडला आप इट किया न कोटे लोवट किया न कोटे शेरोगे के न लोवट किया देंगे ऐ थे माव के तराम सुंदर द मतलब एक आसुन आप ही मिलंग खंडायम ठ thank uh, dr amita fernando for participating in the first round of delivering awards and certificates for the second round i would cordially invite dr damika vidanagama consultant microbiologist to have you madam on the stage with us to give out the certificates and awards हाय हाथ आठ श्रेणी संधा ओ कुसलता साहतिक एवागे म प्रथम देवन तुन्वन स्थान परिणामी माय में सुदाना मन्ने तुन्वन स्थान देखा कपट दिए न आप ही कितना मासिरु तावे टे पत्तुनार के लोग बकी कान्नो को वेट मी निम सरा वेट मी निम नारा म्यूजियस विद्यालय कोलंबर नेट मी दू एन सादे मी निम्सारे सादेव निम्सारे पुता बीरकैटिये राजपक्षे जाति के पास है लर देवने स्थाने हिमिकरगाने वार्षना प्रतिपन श्री शान्मुग हिंदू बालिका विद्वाले त्रिकुणामाले इन्नतिया दुआ she is Varshana Pratipan Sri Sanmuga Hindu College, Trinkamali. This is also really a nice art, what we got, and it has BCG given to the child, and it has a different style. At the Mape, Chitra Upadesha Kamahata Palavanian Mukare, Daruan Visin Madina Ladreka Toradim. ए रेखा वाले तीन वेनेस देमाउपियन रेखा ऐं दिनों पर तीन वेनेस ओह आपटक किया दुन्ना ईलंग टे थमाई चित्र वाली नापी तेरुए में एक्टर्टम दारुण नैंद पु चित्र वालीन होंदम थाव देखिएला मंदाई 
मीलांगटे प्रथम स्थाने दिनागनु लबाने नेसांदी नितिनी सेनरात जनाजीपति बालिका महाविद्यालय गाल नेसांदी दुए हरिम लसन पाठ मानस निवन चित्रे आपको बाप टेंडला दीला की बुना मैं चित्रे पुरावटा सियलु साउक्ते बालमुलु ओबसांके तवत कल्ला की बुना ये दनीले धारीन वाई देवरुन आनी कुत कार्य मंडला सियलु देना मर शेरों के मार्दने करान लोगों टक किया देना आयरुद मार्दने कराने टक सेवा सापे ना आयरुद निसांदी दुए इताम हैदर टेंडला की बुना स्तुति निसांदी दुए मुलु लोग में ऐहरुआ द हो दे मीलंग टक आराधना कराने नामय दाहय एकोला हा वासर वाले दुगला पुताल गे चाय ग्राहके अंधाई तुन्वने स्थानक मेवारत देखा कपटे तोरण नटे सिद्ध होना ओडारा काविंदी महानाम जाति के पास अल्ल मोनरा गले ऐगी चित्रे पुरामत में में संकल्प सियाल लगे बिलाती बुना वालक पागे नहीं में प्रतिकार रहे एवं में बेहत लगागे नहीं में नीतावट में सुवकल है कि बाबा में सियाल संकेत वातुना तमत तुन्मन साने आती है ना नेत्मी महेशिका दानसेकर बिहार महादेवी बालिका विद्वाल नेत्मी महेशिका दानसेकर दुआ अभी देवन स्थान है त्याग मु देवन स्थान है नेतुलिमा नेसाधि मुनवीर दुआ गांधखंड मध्य महाविद्यालय पहलमाडुल नेतुलिमा नेसाधि ऐगी चित्रे आप इधर पात्रिका वक्ते साउथ के पात्रिका वक्ते हुआ तलबा के तहत की सांकल पहातरक दाखवला थी बुना ओबट पेन वा में चित्रे बेहत लबागन होंद बात आश्चर्या होंद साउथ के थात्या जीवन थात्या उदाहरण का न उत्साह गए नहीं मा पैदगत पेन वा मास के कदाने तो ये वागे मा आपी कहीं न अवस्था वाले मुकाद करान नॉने ये वागे मा प्रोहल का तवान न टोने बेहत का नॉने कोई बेलावे होंद आई मीलंग टे पालवेनी स्थाने दिनागने वारिये पले श्री सुमंगल महाविद्यालय रोचिकर रानुष बियान विलपुता पुता के चित्र पोस्टर एक दो वाद सुध सुलेसा आप टे हैंगी गिया अभी मेरे चित्र विनिश्य क्री में दी चित्र में कलात्मक है कि आव आपे गुरु महातार चित्र उपदेश को महातार एवागे में शेरोग आंशे विशेषक्यों वरुण बरियान में ही तीन शेरोग पानी में डपीली बंदर सुविशेषी तावया साउ के प्रवर्धन कार्य आंशे आपी में कोई तरह दुर्घटन मिनी सुन्दर सानी में दने भी है कि हाँ मिनी सुन्गे चारियां विनाश कराने टे पादन में दमाने टे पुलवां दे आना तीरने करने बुआ में नमी कैटेगरीज ने तम में नमी तूने टे लाकुनुला बादी में तुलिं तमाई अभी में चित्र तोरा गनुले बुए हो दाई अभी आमु मीलांग अवस्था � टीवी से नेट सुधानम आपे लोग बेट एक जाने बैडी ही टीलो वट टीवी से न दोरे दोरा गुलो विवर्त करमी नो बहिने इतन ओब तमाई आपे बेनास करना आपे मिनी सुन बेनास करना साध गया ओब में संधा काल या व्यायक कीरीम आपे आडम बरे ट करुना इतन दोला हा दाहतु नमस्सर तुन्वन साने दिनागनु लबन्ने हिरुनी मांजली सेनरात पुष्पदान बालिका विद्यालय महानुवर ये दुष्कर काले समारे वेलावट पाठ पेतिया करान देन्ना डे तेल सायम मरान देना डे दिए सायम पिंस लारान देना डे आप हासु बैन्ना दे आती मैं सियल उदेवल मैं चित्र तुला गैप बुना एनी साई आप टे हम बात न बिंदक म आप टे हम रे कावक म वाटिंग म इतने दुए पुते आप यामु देवन स्थाने डे शरफा रिफ रिफात 
Mahmud Balika Viduhale Kalmune. This is the second place for Sharpa Rifat Muhammad Girls School Kalmune. Dwe Mema Chitre Varna Sanyojane, Evagema Me Chitre Tibita Sankalpa, Mehi Tibuna, Bivida Agam, Vivida Jati Nyojane Karamin, Api, Me Punchirate, Hamadinik Me Katunot. Share of a Mardanekaragan Puluan Kena Sankalpe. Abi Harima de Re, Oyalagi Vachanavalin, Oyalagi Telitudin, Lover Temea Kia de Negoda. Idiri Parampara Venas, Apita Subavadi, Chivita Clebino. On the Palamustane, Himikaragane, Mahanura Pushpadana Balika Viduhale, Kavya Prabhodini, Jai Singha Duai. Over the Tibune, Ek Panimidea, Ek Panimidea Saralavalia Tibuna, Esandahat, Over the Am Lakunu Pramania Clebuna, Eva Gemma, Noekut, Pate Daganimi, Ape, Sheroge Darunubava, Honda, Penahal Lakata, Haravaga Naduna, Over Ekadigate, Masahaya, Pratikara Labaganim, Petakat Bava, Ekia Tibuna. Honda, Duepute, Studi. Obat wedi hitian ge, denu atvi ma wenwen obe aderinia teli tuda, apatam mantek kete isimbu aklaba denna de yamukrata. Itin sieluma guru mahatma mahatmin tat wacan ikin ho mesan dah dah ikavena obatat apa evinishu mandeleta tiaga laba denna dekatu obasam dat dehwin masudi. Mama misi syakni wai diut pelamar singa sauti pravar denna karya anci. Bedah di mana sahaja sahaja gelar badan sel binat mesra binat binat ada ni. Wajibnya kata itu ni apa? Tu sahaja gelar badan. Khususnya ni wajib tu mian ni obat dah heman ni istirahat. Mana tu? Mana? Evan mana? Jaya gahan ekor sel tu darwan ni ruin. Nampak at persan nadi akla badi. Aun sabat sabat dari macam ni sila sila. Hasil sikra potil pada kenggalayum parisil kelagi. Adik ke adik di kalangan kita beri nanti terima pada orang. Inda potir, akan kali samir kita inda beri kali terada manusia kalangan kita beri le nanti kalangan para tu kalai terima pada orang. Nihat tuh rapi desa kalangan kita beri nanti. Enggal ada kalai payah tu inggal bandar manusia kal, manusia celwangal, awak kalangan petrol kalangan kita beri le nanti kalai turut kalun rom. Mereka murah murah, karaso karaso senggal le elpo maru kita beri lang beri nanti kal. Thank you very much indeed. Now let us move to the next item of the agenda. Let me cordially invite Dr. Ravini Karunathilaka, the President of College of Pneumologists and Consultant Respiratory Physician attached to National Hospital of Sri Lanka to address the gathering. Over to you, ma'am. Good morning, uh, officials from the Ministry of Health, Director National Program for Tuberculosis and Chest Diseases, Vice President of the Sri Lanka Medical Association, representatives of the WHO, members from the different colleges, my dear colleagues, parents and students. Not many would disagree on the close association between the respiratory physician and the disease tuberculosis. It is one of the oldest diseases known to mankind and the first disease that is introduced to the young respiratory physician. As we grew as clinicians, an intuitive diagnosis of TB showcased our clinical maturity and acumen, something we all aspire to have and admire in our senior consultants. TB will always remain close to the hearts of the respiratory physician. Therefore, with such close links to TB, I'm delighted to represent the Sri Lanka College of Pharmacologists 
at the World TB Day Commemoration 2022. Let me thank the organizers of this event for inviting me and the members of the college. The TB Assembly of the College too had planned some many activities of which you are about to witness one. For this, I take, uh, I like to take this opportunity to thank the members of the assembly, especially Dr. Ishan Pereira for his tireless efforts. Truly a remarkable feat in such a short time. Let me also thank all the singers, actors, and all others, including uh, Mr. Kalana and Mr. Jeevan, who made this dream a reality in making this song. I think, big or small, we all need to invest in TB. And collectively, we will be able to reach the goal of NTB in Sri Lanka by 2035. Please do sit back and enjoy the creativity and the talent showcased by our very own respiratory physicians. Thank you. Well, indeed, uh, you might be wondering that uh, we are privileged to have doctors and medical staff with an aesthetic flavor. So, why we wait? Uh, we are awaiting to see the talents of our professionals, colleagues at this forum. Over to you. Thank you. 
thank you. Anyway, we will give a round of applause for their uh, creativity. And I think this is uh, done within a very short period of time. So indeed, now we are moving to the next. We are moving to the next item in the agenda. So this, uh, this is actually a timely topic uh, with the prevailing COVID situation and what had happened to the tuberculosis control activities. Let me have the privilege to invite Dr. Mrs. Onali Rajapaksha, consultant community physician attached to National Program for Tuberculosis Control and Chest Diseases to deliver the invited lecture, the first invited lecture on the impact of COVID pandemic and investing for TB, the epidemiological aspect. Over to you, ma'am. ने <laughs> TB Saha Roge Samaga Kata may Yana HIV Roge Sambandi Katiutukarna uh Ape Jatika uh HIV Saha uh Lingash with the Roga and Satahani at the Shikatumia, Eva Game, Outgalika, Vajja and Sabara in at the Shikatumia to do at the Shikurum Ganava Feminitna, Eva Game Divina Pura Sitina uh uh social roga we see Sakni White Dur Gananava Pemina Nangma Se Mam Panan Karina Tuna de Tumala Piliga Tui, you are game a Jatika uh Sosana Roga Rohala Tinoa Vedisar E Rohale at the Shikatuma Pemina, is here the Nama Piligana Gamang, uh me uh Vedasatahanata Jirieta Jiri Vedakate to Karagana Gamang, uh Mata uh me metaning me Avastave Samuganda Mata Avastava Labad in the Pilila Sitina, Eva Gamer, Jester uh Vis Sakna White Amita Prananda Metumata, uh Ape Suranda Metumat Samaga Mula Senator, Feminine Nakela, Gauruing Illa Sitinoa, Mema Adubado, Pirimahanda, Api Venuing. Oh, Mr. Thank Eminent members of the head table, presidents of the colleges, ladies and gentlemen. So today, as we commemorate World TV Day for the year 2022, let us reflect back on last couple of years and the way forward, investing to end TV. Yes, so we all know the effects of COVID pandemic started to show in our lives and in every aspect, starting from early 2020. And for TB, it was no exception. Here in this slide, I have summarized the effects of COVID on TB at the global level. We can see here, each and every aspect was affected, starting from diagnosed TB patients. You can see here, more than 1 million reduction in uh, diagnosed TB patients from 2019 to 2020 was observed, taking us back to 2012 levels. The reduced access to TB diagnostics and treatment resulted in increased TB deaths, despite 
lower numbers of diagnosed TB patients. People provided with treatment for drug-resistant TB show a decline of around 15%. TB preventive uh, treatment was reduced by around 20%. And importantly, global spending on TB was reduced by around 10%. And this is despite the fact that in 2019 even, the world could not find enough money funding for TB. Stop TB Partnership, an international organization partnership, which is hosted by United Nations, uh, partnering with other international organizations, such as <coughs> World Health Organization, uh, says that 1.4 million fewer people received care for TB in 2020 compared to 2019, a 20% reduction. COVID-19 may set us back at least five years in the global fight against TB, and the future predictions are alarming. 6.3 million additional people developing TB and 1.4 million additional TB deaths are predicted in the coming years because of COVID. This is from a systematic review, which was conducted in 2021 among several countries, including our neighboring country, India, China, South Africa, and some more countries. So here they have assessed impact of COVID-19 on TB using a mathematical model. So in each and every country, the findings have been similar and it has indicated 5 to 15% increase in TB deaths by 2025. They have identified uh, five main areas where TB is affected. You can see as five pillars here. The first one, tuberculosis infection. Increasing household contact, increasing testing and treatment delays. They have a uh, tend to increase number of tuberculosis infections in the community. Decrease in community and also communal contact, increase in mask wearing, lowering community tuberculosis infections. The second column, TB disease burden. Here, the vulnerability to TB. And in some countries, decrease in BCG vaccination coverage, and increase in resistance due to treatment interruptions, Decrease in preventive therapy, all these contributing to increase TB disease burden. The third pillar, access to TB tests, decreases in access and demand by the community for TB testing and DST, having reductions in reported TB patients. Then notified and treated, even though diagnosed, not enrolling for treatment. And in some countries, drug stockouts might have led to lower notification and treatment enrollments. The last pillar, treatment success. Again, treatment interruptions because of COVID pandemic and other vulnerability factors leading to poor compliance could lead to lower treatment success. So uh, some of these might be applicable to Sri Lankan setting as well. So when we look at the Sri Lankan scenario, here we can see TB case dissection for the last 15, 16 years, starting from 20, 2005. Earlier, nearly 9,000 to 10,000 cases were detected with fluctuations by around 2016, it came to 8,000. But the lowest numbers we see in 2020 and 2021, the years affected by COVID. For the first time, we see more than 1,000 cases reduction in 2020 compared to previous year. And again, 
nearly 500 cases reductions from 2020 to 2021. This slide compares WHO estimates with our actual reported cases. Here we can see WHO estimates is 64 TB patients per 100,000 population. The actual numbers reported to the National TB program, we see that it's maintained in 40s for a long time. But starting from around 2019, it has begun to go down. And in 2020, around 32,000. And in 2021, last year, it has gone below 30. 29.7, less than even half of the WHO estimates. This slide, I would say, is interesting. Earlier, we were comparing the WHO estimates with our reported cases. So what they have done here is they have taken our actual reported number of TB patients for the years 2015 to 2019, pre-COVID uh, data, and we have forecasted values for 2020, 2021, and 2022. So even if we go by the way we have been doing, for the year 2020, we should have detected around 8,150 patients. But we ended up with 7,258 patients. So there's a deficit of around 900. Again, for the year 2021, the forecast is 7,900 uh, around that figure, but we detected 6,771. So the gap is widening a bit. Now it's around 1,200. So if there is a gap, what is the reason or what are the reasons for that gap? So I think we can remember that slide we discussed about the systematic review, the factors I mentioned there. And from our practical experience, we know that because of COVID, there was a general reluctance among the communities to seek medical help because of fear of contacting COVID if they went to a healthcare facility. And it's not secret that those with respiratory symptoms feared going for treatment because of fear of diagnosed as COVID sometimes, because of maybe because of the stigma, maybe because of the fear of quarantine process or the economical implications from what I have experienced. Some were daily wage earners, so those factors were there, which might have contributed. In addition, the movement restrictions might also have played a part in limiting seek, seeking health behavior. Apart from that, from the service side, service provision side, I think there were some effects on investigations mainly certain smear investigations because of the COVID pandemic. And all these factors might have contributed to these differences we observe here. So again, in this slide, it shows case detection, quarterly case detection for the years 2020 and 2021, the COVID affected years. The important thing to note here is that in 2020, towards the latter part, starting from the third quarter, we are seeing an increasing trend or increasing quarterly trend in case detection, which is very encouraging. And we hope that it will continue into this year as well. So this slide shows treatment outcome for TB patients. For the previous years, we have maintained treatment success rate of around 84, 85, which is satisfactory. But for the year 2020, it has gone down a bit. 
to 82 percent at the cost of increasing death rates we can see it has gone up to 7.6 so this picture is similar to what we have seen in the global scenario reduction in case numbers but still the deaths going up but here i want to highlight another factor as well the highest deaths due to an infectious disease in sri lanka is reported from tuberculosis of course apart from covid and we talk about dengue and dengue deaths it's about 30 to 40 deaths per year but in tb we are talking about hundreds of lives so what is the way forward maybe investing for tb and covid together is it possible we know tb and covid both are mainly respiratory diseases spread by droplets and the comorbidities or the risk factors are more or less the same diabetes chronic kidney disease hiv aids chronic lung diseases and so on and the social risk factors or the determinants overcrowding air pollution poverty uh, limited space all these and stigma and discrimination and the economical implications all are common to both so in providing health care can we share our resources in treating the both maybe same tools health care workers and systems to prevent future airborne pandemics and even now up to now i think we have done that to some extent we know that gene expert machines in tb were used for pcr testing in uh, covid likewise few months back i think a circular was issued for those who were having symptoms suspected of covid after excluding covid to test for tb so that is a possible task investments in tb is identified to be one of the most cost effective public health interventions a us dollar invested is said to yield a return of around 43 us dollars according to the global fund investing to fight tb and covid-19 at the same time will save lives from both diseases if we don't we run the risk of defeating one year born pandemic only to watch deaths and cases from another source so with this i think when implementing tb control activities there are other few things we have to keep in mind at the moment the national program is driving towards ntb targets by 2035 where there are three main targets reducing tb incidence reducing tb deaths and having zero catastrophic cost in the yellow boxes are the latest achievements and looking at those you can say that there is a long way for us to go before achieving the ntb target so we will have to strive forward with full force to achieve the ntb goals why are we having this difficulty why is it a challenge because we are facing multifaceted challenges here mentioned are some of them starting from high death rates due to various reasons lack of community engagement myths stigma discrimination economical factors and many more treatment delays non adherence to treatment regimes maybe because of longer regimes or poor counseling and 
the contribution from private sector for KS detection or the Ayurvedic sector, loss to follow up and reasons for loss to follow up, default tracing, contact tracing, getting them for screening, contributions from NGOs, CBOs, screening of high risk groups, how to get those done. All these are with different issues, which sometimes cannot be addressed by the TB control program alone or even the health alone. So that's why we have this a service network. Of course, Ministry of Health, other ministries, political commitment, donor agencies and organizations such as World Health Organization, Global Fund are there for funding, logistical support, and sometimes providing technical guidance. And under them, NP NPTCCD is operating within the country through a network. There are certain organizations and resources directly, technically operating under the unit. And there are many more partners involved in TB care. From health, non-health, government, non-government, private sector, all of them. So the important thing here is that each and every stakeholder is a partner. Each and every partner has a specific role to play with a unique role which cannot be fulfilled by any other. So I think we need to make them aware of that so that they are able to enable to play their role well. Moving on to the second part of the presentation, for the future, investing. This year's theme for TB Day is invest to NTB save lives. Are we here talking about financial investment? The simple answer is yes, because what they say is due to this ongoing COVID-19 efforts and a catastrophic funding gap of over 9 billion US dollars, the global progress to combat TB is hampered. This slide shows two posters I have taken from Stop TB Partnership, and I think the posters clearly gives out the message. In the first poster, you can see of the US dollars, 15 billion promised by the United Nations high level meeting, which was held in 2018, only around five to six billion dollars were received with a deficit of around 9 billion, not even half was received. In the next poster, investment for vaccine. TB and COVID-19 are the two top infectious disease killers in the world. You can see the jars. The jar for COVID-19, over 100 billion US dollars. The one for TB a mere 117 million US dollars. A deadly divide. So is it only financial investment we are talking here? No, it is not. Investment of hard work, determination, emotion, and energy by all the partners involved in TB care of course, towards a common goal that is to save lives. So where are we going to invest? We can invest or we have to invest in TB services to strengthen health systems, to make them more resilient to conditions such as pandemic so they can withstand conditions such as COVID pandemic. Then 
we have to invest to ensure access to essential TB services. Essential TB services does not mean just having the chest clinic. It means having better quality, more sensitive diagnostics, having better quality, uninterrupted drug supplies, and having updated, skilled human resource. This is very important in TB. We know that TB is a chronic disease where you need to treat the patients for a longer time. So maintaining these services is very vital. Invest in empower. Who are we empowering? The communities. To empower the communities to stand against stigma and discrimination and to enable them to seek medical care. And for those diagnosed with TB to have good compliance and complete their treatment successfully. Invest in rollout. Now, I think this is very important as healthcare workers, I think, because all these things that we have talked here are implemented to the community through us healthcare workers. So we will have to identify presumptive TB patients correctly, not missing them, then send them for proper investigations. If diagnosed with TB, prescribe them with better quality uh, accurate prescriptions, anti-TB drugs, and counseling and maintaining their compliance. So the treatment is successfully completed. Here, I think for this to work out in a better way, we will have to make the awareness, increase the awareness among our healthcare workers as well. And through that awareness and skill development, we'll be able to roll out this successfully. Then invest in research for new drugs, new vaccines, new tools. I think in TB, it's very important because if I'm right, during the last 50 years, there were only three new drugs and regimes in TB discovered a deadly disease if not treated properly and still having longer regimens and where drug resistant TB is a hot topic. So at each and every level, we will have to promote research. Invest in enabling. We know TB is not a standalone disease. We discussed it earlier also. Diabetic patients, HIV AIDS patients, chronic kidney disease patients, and so on are at risk of, of TB. So we will have to improve awareness among those groups as well, the healthcare teams, and integrate our services for a better outcome. Here, we should not forget the public, uh, private health sector as well, private hospitals and the general practitioners. They play a huge role. So according to national program uh, act, uh, strategic plan, by 2025, 20, we are expecting 30% of the TB cases to be uh, received from private sector. So we will have to enable them more, invest more in them. Other than that, the other partners, estate sector, prisons, NGOs, and so on. We will have to make them aware on current conditions of TB and other necessary knowledge to make them equipped so they are better able to uh, fulfill their roles in ending TB. 
role of healthcare workers in investing for TB. If you are an administrator or in a decision making position, you will have to maintain high quality essential TB services during the current pandemic situation. And second one, incorporate to TB into routine health interventions. I think even at the moment, we are doing this to some extent through OPD referrals, but we will have to strengthen these practices. Third one is mainly about professionalism and medical ethics. TB is a sensitive topic associated with stigma. So as healthcare professionals, we will have to maintain our medical ethics optimally. The fourth one, very important, be updated and knowledgeable and skilled on current TB situation, diagnostics available, and the service structure, which is very important. That is a must as a healthcare worker, if you are to detect, correctly detect and refer such patients for the um, TB uh, care system. These are some of the posters I uh, got from World Health Organization website, giving out very important messages. There were a few more, but I selected only three. COVID-19 has reversed progress in the fight against TB by over a decade. Over half of the children and adolescents with TB face barriers in accessing TB care due to difficulties in diagnosis and treatment. Drug-resistant TB remains a public health crisis and a health security threat. So with that, I conclude my presentation. Let us join hands to NTB in near future. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam, for that uh, overview and the comprehensive, detailed uh, knowledge and the current update given to us. So we are moving to the next item in the agenda. It's uh, an invited lecture by Dr. Niranjan Disanayaka. He's a consultant respiratory physician and also the vice president of the College of Pulmonologists on the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on TB. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, I bring greetings uh, from the Sri Lanka College of Pulmonologists, one of the main uh, stakeholders in uh, mitigating the impact of tuberculosis uh, from the clinical as well as the technical aspects in Sri Lanka to the NPCCD, uh, which is the, uh, one of the main stakeholders in mitigating tuberculosis in the aspect of public health as well as in administration. So it is an honor to speak to you on this day. And uh, I, would talk, I would plan to uh, talk to you about the cursed duet. A cursed duet is a name that we use to HIV and tuberculosis, but unfortunately COVID has the impact that is more than tuber HIV in tuberculosis management. And we have seen that uh, by the presentations by the previous speakers, how it has impacted uh, in management and uh, uh, controlling tuberculosis activities. So these are two basic microorganisms. One is a virus, which has its origin in bats and then transformed into humans around the late 2019s. And it has evolved into multiple mutations. And the one of the most commonest and the uh, recent ones is being the Omicron BA2 variant, which is very, very uh, contagious uh, when, when you think about the viral mechanisms of uh, giving the disease. And it has been there for about two years, but the impact that it has ban been done to the lives of the humanity, as well as the economy is immense. And I, can, I think you can understand the impact that it has done. 
another, the other bacteria that we are talking about is actually a bacteria which evolved with us from the onset of uh, humanity about uh, millennia ago from the Horn of Africa where we migrated into various continents. These ba this bacteria evolved with us for the generations and then now still it causes an immense uh, burden in the health sector being one of the most potent infective causes of death uh, today. And that is the reason that we are having this day to commemorate tuberculosis in spite of being with us for about more than 20,000 years. Now, when you talk about tuberculosis in Sri Lanka, you know, we have many, many achievements to boast of when you compare with the countries that are around Sri Lanka and the Southeast Asian region. But unfortunately, I think we have missed the bus. Basically, we have missed the golden opportunity. If you look at the lower down, our tuberculosis prevalence was about 1,600 per 100,000 in 1956, which was brought to about 1,200 per 100,000 in the 1970s. And then to the current uh, of the status of about 65 per 100,000 in, in about 2000, year 2000. But since then, we have not been able to reduce the amount of prevalence of tuberculosis in Sri Lanka, unfortunately, even though our health sector has achieved many more, many, many, many achievements. And if you can look at this clearly, and our NTB target remains the red line down there, but we are still up there somehow. And if you look at the, this is a calculated value, I agree, but if you look at the true value of uh, prevalence of Sri Lanka, it's about still about 45 to 50, and it is still higher than the target that we have set in 2025. So still, we are, there's a lot of things that we can do, even without COVID. And when you look at the other aspects of tuberculosis, if you look at this blue, di dark blue section of this graph, unfortunately, even though our multidrug resistant tuberculosis burden is very low in Sri Lanka, we still have a significant amount of deaths due to tuberculosis. Every each day, about one or two people die because of tuberculosis in Sri Lanka. And this is rather unfortunate, given that we don't have MDR-TB that, that much in Sri Lanka. And that we, you know, it, it is rather unfortunate because, and it's a completely treatable disease, right? So there are many factors. So 7%, 6.5 to 7% of people die uh, out of the people who we initiate anti-tuberculosis treatment. And this is a problem that we still have in Sri Lanka. And outcomes, unfortunately, in Sri Lanka, even though we boast of a good health system, is about 85% cure rate. Our target is about 90%, but still we have not been able to achieve it. Now, this is before the burden of COVID that has happened to us during the past two or three years. And you can understand by the various speakers that spoke to you earlier, from about 8,500 to 9,000 diagnoses per year, we have reduced to 7,000 and last year to about 6,000 we have diagnosed. So that doesn't mean that TB is not there in the community and we are not diagnosing it. And you can understand the impact of this in the community, right? And this actually was shared by the previous uh, a speaker, hence I will not go into detail. Now, there are some positive impact, it seems that of the COVID impact that people wearing masks and because of that, there's a reduced contactability, especially outside your house and uh, the, the transmission of tuberculosis will be less, but all the other aspects of the tuberculosis management because of COVID, we see negative impacts. And we can see that with data that is coming out in the in Sri Lanka as well as in the world, right? So I just would like to share to you my personal experience of District Chest Clinic Ratnapura, how COVID has affected uh, during the 2018, because before COVID, 2019 also before COVID, 2020 at the uh, COVID, that, uh, that's the time that Sri Lanka suffered from COVID, started suffering from COVID and we had countrywide lockdowns from about, a, uh, from about February to June that year, right? And we can see that this is a dark red line uh, here. You can see that the number of OPD visits to the chest clinic Ratnapura has drastically reduced in March, April, as well as in May. 
And we know that most of the people who are diagnosed as tuberculosis are being diagnosed at the chest clinic mostly. And when the OPD visits comes down, these are the first visits actually from the referrals as well as patient visits. And you can understand the impact that we can have to reduce the amount of tuberculosis diagnosis. And when you look at the number of patients with tuberculosis that had been diagnosed up to about June, we can see only about 166 has been diagnosed. And if you even uh, you know, uh, multiply it by two, it will not come to the 435 that was there in 2018. And uh, most of them are sputum positive, right? We can see that the, the problem with the sputum positive being not diagnosed is that they can spread the disease to other people. So of this 90, if we say that you know, to the year we have diagnosed about 200, we have missed about 50 people in Ratnapura alone. Uh, with smear positive tuberculosis and that people can spread the disease at least to about 10 to 15 people in a, in a one year. So we can understand the gravity that the community effect that the, this undiagnosing will have in patients to the patients as well as their families. Right. And number of TB files open, you can see this drastic drop in April as well as in May, even though it has catched up in June, it has never been up to the normal range. Right? So this has not been in Sri Lanka as well. In Sierra Leone, we could, this African country, we can see a drastic drop of confirmed tuberculosis as well as suspect tuberculosis cases. In India, we can see that the active tuberculosis, that is the blue line, is the 2018 data. And you can see that the 2019-20 data coming in the orange line, there's a drastic drop in diagnosing of active tuberculosis, especially in India and Philippines as well, right? And not only in the developing countries, you can see this in USA. This is a cohort of people in Texas, USA, where even there with the maximum amount of uh, sophisticated technology, they have not even been able to cope up with this uh, diagnostic problems due to COVID, right? And there are many, many articles that are there in the literature today, and uh, most of them have shown a significant impact of COVID causing a, diag a reduced diagnosis of number of tuberculosis patients, and out of which about 50% will be smear positives. And hence, we can see, we will be able to see the impact probably in about one or two years, especially we might have a TB boom uh, within the next two to three years because of these people spreading the disease to another person. And we can, we already see, uh, my colleagues will agree, severe disease with tuberculosis who have not seek treatment coming into the hospitals and some of them dying with severe tuberculosis, right? And we can see that the blue line is 2019 and the red line is 2020. So we can see in various spheres, it has been affected. The number of, num these, are the con the, these are the collective data of number of countries. Uh, diagnosed number has reduced markedly and uh, the drug resistant number, the diagnosis of drug resistant tuberculosis has markedly reduced, that is GR, and you can identify the, you can understand the impact of that. The people who have died have uh, not much change, but there is one positive silver lining in this uh, dark cloud, that is the increasing of telehealth. And I think that is one way forward that we can go ahead, especially during the lockdowns. I'm happy that most of our district tuberculosis control officers, they were, they were doing an immense task and a difficult task. And some of them were using telehealth uh, methodologies of giving the numbers to the patients and having a communication with them, with a direct contact with them. So this has been increased. And I think that is one of the way forwards that we can mitigate future impacts in tuberculosis management. So, is there evident delay of tuberculosis diagnosis? Yes, there is enough evidence to say that. So probably the patients are not coming uh, to seek care because they are afraid that they will be stigmatized that they are having COVID because the symptoms are cough anyway and low grade fever. And there was a time when various uh, media institutions took uh, cameras to uh, tell you know, record people's homes who are having COVID. So there was a certain stigmatization of the community. And because of this fear of being labeled as COVID in the earlier stages, they actually didn't come to seek the medical health uh, care that they needed, unfortunately. Unfortunately, fortunately, our facilities were never locked down. Our chest clinics were open, even though there were some staff shortages and some logistics issues. There were, uh, but the patients couldn't come because the public transport system was not there. 
three wheelers were charging a huge amount of money so that patients can't come to the uh, clinics. So, and because of that, they couldn't actually afford to come to the clinics, even if they wanted to. So this was a significant factor that we have to look forward in further mitigating, right? And sometimes, unfortunately, thinking of COVID patients with tuberculosis were missed, right? So this effect of COVID and tuberculosis has probably, uh, you know, if there is a reduction of 50% of diagnosis of tuberculosis, we will have about 1.85 million estimated deaths in 2020 because of this additional 400,000 deaths because of the because of COVID impact only. So if you, if you go into the scientific basis of matters, so there is a question whether because we, we know that certain viral diseases increase the risk of uh, reactivating latent tuberculosis. Latent tuberculosis, I think this is one of the cases that patients that we had Right. Uh, this is a patient who was uh, actually about 23-year-old patient who was having a full-blown COVID uh, around last year, uh, I think it's about August. Uh, he had the bilateral lung opacities and the PCR was positive. And after discharging with a PCR, negative PCR, he repeatedly came to the clinic for the first month saying that he's having a persistent cough. And uh, we did the bronchoscope because of that. And uh, I think you can see that this patient has a tumor-like appearance in the carina of the bronchus, and fortunately for this patient, this biopsy became positive for tuberculosis and not the malignancy. So this patient who had had COVID uh, can present with cough and other symptoms, and uh, sometimes we might miss the diagnosis, and probably we don't know, we, we do, even though we don't have any scientific evidence, whether it has been a cause of activating of tuberculosis. Right? And when you look at TB and COVID together, there are many, many similarities, the stress to the health system, the need for rapid diagnosis. And fortunately, we have rapid diagnosis methods for both tuberculosis as well as COVID management. At the moment, the social stigma, fortunately, the stigma to COVID is now gradually reducing in the community. But unfortunately, the stigma for tuberculosis is still prevalent. And that is the reason that we have, have many, many uh, health education education uh, aspects. And as pointed out, funding for tuberculosis. If we had this funding that during the last two years, which was poured into COVID for tuberculosis uh, during the last 30 years, I think by now the world would have uh, developed a, probably a vaccine against tuberculosis that would have been prevented tuberculosis and millions, 1.5 million deaths per year, right? So if we took COVID up to about last, uh, generally, we have lost about 2.5. Every life matter, that is not the matter. But tuberculosis, unfortunately, we, have, we are losing 1.5 million people. That is almost the population of a province of Sri Lanka. Right? So similarities are different as are many. So when you look at tuberculosis pathogenesis, when you get, a, get tuberculosis into your body, it will stay in your body sometimes without causing the disease and which we cause latent tuberculosis and then you can go into active disease at any time and uh, when the pathogenicity of uh, the viral infections usually the covid covid virus usually have a good uh, the main immune response is a t4 tcd4 mediated immunity which will have a which will have a cell-mediated immunity, and the innate immunity will, will cause the natural killer cells to come and destroy the infected cells. And the CD4 cells actually will, has, will have a beautiful effect on the, on the antibodies of the body, and it will cause production of uh, neutralizing antibodies from the plasma cells by converting B cells into plasma cells. So these antibodies are very important in mitigating the effect of uh, COVID. So it, the CD4 cells, as well as the antibodies may play a major role in, uh, in the action against COVID infection in the human body. But when you compare the tuberculosis bacteria, only the CD4 cell matters. Actually, the humoral immune system, as you know, doesn't cause a significant uh, effect on the immunity but it is a CD4 mediated uh, response, right? So the, the studies show that there is functional exhaustion of T cell with COVID-19 cells. So, and we know that this T C cell, T cell is the main mediator of TB response. And uh, it sometimes helps to short circuit the immune system causing increased disease, right? So, but 
there are some case reports where COVID has caused active tuberculosis, right? And, uh, and this is a study uh, which has been done throughout the world. It's called the GTN study, uh, published in the European Respiratory Journal. But according to that, uh, you know, COVID has not uh, shown to increase the progression of uh, 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 tuberculosis from the latent to the active. But when you look at the true picture, we can see that there are many, many, many factors that will affect activation of latent tuberculosis in these patients. When you compare with HIV, we know that in these patients with HIV, we have patients who are having severe immune deficiency and multiple comorbidities can develop active disease. And in COVID-19 as well, we know that these patients can have, they are on immunosuppressive treatment like dexamethasone. They have a severe viral infection impairing the immune system. They are nutrition is impaired and they have chronic renal failure and diabetes as well. So there is a possibility that the COVID infection, even though not directly, might that, but indirectly activate latent tuberculosis in people, right? But other problem is that when we're looking at, when we're looking at COVID, sometimes we might miss or not think about tuberculosis. And this is exactly one of our patients who are at the, who are at the ward today. He's actually retroviral positive. And when you look at the HRCT, there are bright bilateral ground glass opacities, which was diagnosed to probably have a pneumocystis gerovaci. But when we look at the patients closely, the HRCT, we can see the three in bud appearances. And when you look at the brain, there are multiple lesions. And you know, if you think about these patients only as these uh, other infections, we might miss a lot of patients with tuberculosis, right? And when you look at the TB prevalence in patients with COVID, sometimes it's about 0.5, but sometimes in countries can go about one in 20 patients with COVID can have tuberculosis and it can cause additional burden uh, to the healthcare system, right? And uh, of these patients who have been diagnosed, some of these patients have been diagnosed before and some of them have been diagnosed at the same week. Right? So again, the DGN, uh, net, uh, the GTN ne network, has shown that around 17.6 of the patients have been diagnosed as COVID and TB at the same time. So that gives a message to us because I think, especially when the patients come with similar symptoms like cough and shortness of breath with bilateral infiltrations due to COVID infection, we have to think that whether there is, especially in a country like us with a moderate burden, whether there is a coexisting tuberculosis as well in these patients. So it is very important that we should not miss these patients, right? And uh, these are the demographic characteristics, and you can see that these are not different from the normal TB population, right? And uh, the one of the most important thing about the radiology of uh, of uh, tuberculosis patients is about, in about seven, there have been no diagnosis. There had been no lesions in the chest X-ray or CTs in these patients, but the other have been, there have been bilateral pulmonary nodules as is expected, cavitatory lesions have been the main uh, thing that they have seen. So majority of the CTs and uh, X-rays have been positive in patients with TB and COVID together, but the, we can, we should remember that there are some that might not show the changes that are there. So does COVID-19 increase the mortality of CD19 uh, of uh, TB patients, right? So this study, uh, about 49, uh, about 69 cases in Italy has shown that there is no significant difference in the mortality simply because out of the 20 of the second cohort, uh, 19 of them were young immigrants with tuberculosis who got the disease while nosocomial and infection while in the hospital. Hence, they didn't actually have a significant amount of sequelae, but most of the other studies, when you compare with the Clinical Infection Disease Journal article, HIV, we know that the increase, there's an increased risk of death about two times, and it is almost uh, similar right, uh, in tuberculosis. Current tuberculosis has increased, current tuberculosis and COVID together has increasing, is, is increasing the death, possibility of death for about three times in a person uh, who is co-infected. And even past tuberculosis, with especially in our patients who have damaged lung, the death rates increase, unfortunately, right? So around, that is the, the message is that about there's a 25% increase in, uh, sorry, two times increase in deaths in patients with uh, uh, tuberculosis and COVID together, right? So this is another cohort, right? So when, I would like to uh, 
touch upon this one. This is actually in India, uh, unfortunately, six of the patients who have had COVID and uh, tuberculosis have been admitted to the ICU and all of them have died. So this is actually the true picture. So sometimes the mortality in the developed countries might not reflect the true picture that we have. And especially we have faced many patients who come with late tuberculosis as well as severe COVID infections. And one of the major challenges as clinicians that we had was finding them ICUs. We can't put them into the normal COVID board, fearing that the, the other patients will be getting infected with uh, uh, tuberculosis, and we can't put them into a, even an HDU uh, because they are infected with COVID as well as tuberculosis. So we struggle daily to improve these patients' outcome because of this problem. So the way forward would be a, a area where there are proper infection protection me uh, mechanisms with negative pressure as well, right? So have we finished? Now, even if we discharge a patient with COVID and tuberculosis, and we know as clinicians, both COVID has sequelae of lung diseases by itself, and we have the post-COVID lung syndromes that are there in the society. And at the same time, we know that tuberculosis can damage the lung irreversibly, causing damage to the lung. And both of these will stress the need for long-term health care. And these patients will need pulmonary rehabilitation and further management. So the, the treating a patient with COVID and tuberculosis and sending them home will not adequately address the problems that we have in the patient. So probably a way forward is to have proper uh, rehabilitation uh, clinics, uh, pulmonary rehabilitation clinics, so that these patients can be managed properly. Right? So these are... These are some articles that show evidence that patients who undergo pulmonary rehabilitation with actually with tuberculosis, post-tuberculosis lung sequelae have a better outcome than patients who do not have uh, pulmonary rehabilitation, right? Okay. Right. So there was a huge uproar whether the BCG vaccine was protective, whether we have protection, because most of the COVID deaths that occur in the in the early stages were in countries like United Kingdom and Italy, where BCG vaccination was not mandatory. So there was a, but India, Brazil, and other countries didn't suffer much deaths. So there was a theory that probably the BCG vaccine was protective. BCG vaccine has been protective, shown to be protective, and my pediatric colleagues will agree against. Uh, childhood tuberculosis, many, many meningitis. But other than that, it has been shown to be protective in adolescence of preventing lower respiratory tract infections, right? And influenza vaccine has also been uh, promoted as, uh, you know, as a protective method of tuberculosis, right? But basically, the, for the evidence what has suggested is that now we see that the death rates occur even in the BCG vaccinated population as well as non-BCG vaccinated population. So probably, the protective effect is not there for BCG vaccination, right? So tuberculosis and uh, COVID can appear together, one before the other, right? And uh, there are many, many sequelae of uh, post-COVID and post-tuberculosis complications in these patients. And uh, the overall burden of COVID now we are still, we, without COVID even, as a country, we were struggling to control the tuberculosis rates, detecting new patients, reducing the amount of deaths and giving the facilities to these patients in an appropriate way. But because of this COVID epidemic or pandemic, things have gotten worse, unfortunately. And it has caused this huge financial as well as healthcare burden to the society, right? And, uh, because now, even though it is very easy to say that tuberculosis goes from active tuberculosis, latent tuberculosis, and then it's very easy to see the scientific basis of COVID progression, but uh, the infection and the outcomes will depend on so many, many, many factors. Inequitable economic and social environmental policies, migration, weak health systems, poverty, inappropriate health-seeking behaviors in people, so all of these factors, the social factors, as well as the economic factors, will also come into a play when we are trying to mitigate the effect of these two major pandemics, right? And unfortunately, 12 months of COVID has eliminated 12 years of progress against 
global fight against tuberculosis. And that is the bitter truth that we have to face. And it is our duty as healthcare professionals to be, I, do, I don't think this will be the last pandemic that we will face. So in future, at least, we should have, have the correct tools in place to mitigate these effects rather than crying after the effects have affected our people. Thank you very much for your kind attention and thank you chairperson sir for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much sir for that uh, overview and the relevance to the new normals and the challenges forward. At this moment, we have the privilege to see the presence of our chief guest for this occasion, Additional Secretary Public Health Services of Ministry of Health, Sri Lanka, Dr. Ms. Lakshmi Somatunga. Madam, I cordially invite you to the head table, please. Uh, and next in the event, we have a special presentation actually to invite her, may I, or invite my colleague Transimis to introduce that uh, most important presentation. Sherogenisa Lopura Lokuda Boho Dina Pida with the Missiti. Namut Sherogil Sandaha, Missi Patikar, Labagani Min, Nitavatam Sukal Heki Rogi Aptama. Ekati Hundamanidisuna, Adapi take Katula in a Ita Dushkaratam at the Sherogan at Muhunadi in some poor name Surpatu Kenny. Apiahamu, Ayagay Hadin, Agay Katawa. Filigan Hundat Persana, the Akdi, Ape Kale, Diri, Diani, Jayani, Darmasena. Additin Arifa Viripade, Casino in Alti Vermaha Purita Pate, Vetti Haramaha, other Kavira of four Adi, main the one, Purana Udal Nalatod, our in Anupavangale, Ingolod Pahur Vadak, Madeki, Manavi, Jayani, Darmasenawe, Alekro. Having a sitting as Yeluma Sambavania Mutanging Osarai, Matada make or Sabavata, Ara the take with theatre, Indelebitseka, Mamagoda, Loku Auravea Clisa, Sitanama, Isella Mamaka the Kila Handunula denam, Mage Nama, Chini Dharma Sena, then Vaisauru the Visai, Inne Polonarua Arla Gangila, Iskolegi Polonarua Rajiki with the later, Loka Sharoga Dinevena the Dow say. Sharoge Sampur Nenma on the Vicha, the Anyak with the Hatter, Mamame Abioge, Koma the Jagat Tekiela, Oyalaka Adahas Dakwan Matame Avasta Dunata, Sharoga Mardanaha, Lairogi Piliban, the Jatika Vedsata and Mamage Stutia, Mulin Malabadinama, Mage Katava Gatotan, Mama Aurudu Dahatak Venakang, Niro Giva Hitia, Idabasitamai, the Dasitse, Janavari, Masivage. Mata Una Cassa Eva Gama Kama Ruchia Mage Baraduinama Vage Rogalakshan at Tuna. It was the Pautalika at the Nikipeking Behit Gatta Eunata Kisma Adua Kuna Eva Ging. Maybe there are Rogalakshan a master the capital the Editamai Mata Pautalika and Shedi may Shosana Roga Visheshatna Vaidya Dinish Disanaika Mahata Munagahinama. Itumai Dinama Mava, Polonaru Maro Halata, Atul Karanama Dina Deka Pamanakale of Mama, Sama and Nevato, the Pratikaraganama, E Pratikaragan, Atratura Mage, Una, Hundatama Vedi Venama, E Tekama Mage Matakaya Matakavela Matakaya Mataka Venama, Eva Gima Manasika Matama, Echera Hundaneti Venama, Toda Mava, I see you at Danama. Uh, but the other machine world is some the color of my mom in name. Um, uh, yeah, the Duradi, uh, Polona Rim Pratikara Karatan, Echera Muna, Dunit Natinda, uh, Nura Jatika Roha letter, Mava, uh, Etulatan, uh, Ehidi, Harietama, uh, Tauru Karaganama, Mage, Penahalu Valatai, Moletai, Decatama, uh, Sheroge, Valentila Kiela, 
එතකොට එහෙන් ඉක්මනින්ම රෝගය මේකමයි කියලා දැනගත්තට පස්සේ ඉදිරියට ප්‍රතිකාර කරගෙන යන්න පොළොන්නරුවට ආපහු එවනවා පොළොන්නරුවේදී ප්‍රතිකාර කරගෙන ගියත් උන අඩු වෙන්නෙම නැහැ ඊට පස්සේ මාව ආපහු වැලිසර ලය රෝහලට යවනවා එහිදී මට ප්‍රතිකාර කරන්නේ පන්දු ගුණසේන කියන විශේෂඥ වෛද්‍යතුමා එතුමා මට එදා කියනවා හොඳටම මතකයි මේ මෙහෙට ආවත් ඇති හොඳ කරනවමයි කියලා ඊට පස්සේ මට එහෙදි බෙහෙත් කරා එතකොට මට එහෙදි තනියෙන් මගේ වැඩ කරගන්න පුළුවන් වෙනවා මගේ උනත් හොඳටම හොඳ වෙනකම්ම එහෙ තියාගෙන බෙහෙත් කරලා ඉවර වෙලා මට ගෙදර යන්න පුළුවන් වුණාට පස්සේ මාව පොළොන්නරුව ලය චිකිත්සාගාරයට සම්බන්ධ කරනවා ඉදිරියට බෙහෙත් ලබා ගන්න එහිදී ක්ෂය රෝග නිවාරණ වෛද්‍යතුමිය වුණ ජීවනී මහත්මියයි දිනේෂ් දිසානායක වෛද්‍යතුමයි මට නැවතත් මාව පරීක්ෂා කරමින් බෙහෙත් කරනවා දෙදාස් විස්සේ මාර්තු වල ඉඳන් පටන් ගෙන දෙදාස් විසියකේ අප්‍රේල් වෙනකම්ම අවුරුද්දකට වැඩි කාලයක් මට බෙහෙත් බොන්ඩ වෙනවා මගේ රෝගය ගොඩක් පහු වෙලා ප්‍රතිකාර ගන්න ආව නිසාත් ඒ දේ සිද්ධ වුණා මම රෝග යට මුහුණ දීපු කාලයේදී මට උදව් කරපු උපකාර කරපු මගේ අම්මා තාත්තා පාසලේ යාළුව ගුරුවරු මට බෙහෙත් කරපු සෑම වෛද්‍යවරයෙක්ම සියලුම වෛද්‍ය කාර්ය මණ්ඩලයේ නිලධාරීන්ටම ස්තුතිවන්ත කරන්න මම මේක අවස්ථාවක් කරගන්නවා ඒ වගේම මට සියලුම බෙහෙත් ප්‍රතිකාර පරීක්ෂණ සියල්ලම රජයෙන් නොමිලේ සිද්ධ කරේ ඒවා පිටතින් කරන්න ගියා නම් විශාල මුදලක් වැය වෙනවා ඒ වගේම මේ සියලුම ජනතාවට මට කියන්න තියෙන්නේ ක්ෂය රෝගය වැළඳුණා කියලා බිය වෙන්න දෙයක් නෑ ඉක්මනටම රෝග ලක්ෂණ හඳුනාගෙන ප්‍රතිකාර වලට යොමු වුණා නම් සනීප කරගන්න පුළුවන් ක්ෂය රෝගය වැළඳීම කියන එක සමාජයේ කොන් වීමක් විදිහට තිබුණා ඒක එහෙම වෙන්න ඕන රෝගයක් නෙමෙයි නිට්ටාවටම බේත් තියෙනවා සුව කරගන්න පුළුවන් ශ්‍රී ලංකාවෙන් ක්ෂය රෝගය සදහටම තුරන් කරගන්න නම් අපි අපේ ආකල්ප වෙනස් කරගමු කියලා හැමෝටම ආරාධනා කරන්න මං කැමති මං අසනීප වුණ දවස ඉඳන් උපකාර කළ හැමෝටම ස්තුතිවන්ත වෙමින් මගේ කතාව අවසන් කරනවා අස්සා සිටි ඔබ සැමට ස්තුති Thank you very much, Dua. Shall we give another round of applause to her? That's, that's the story of, from her side. Let's pay some time to listen what the health system has to say about her. Now I cordially invite the District Tuberculosis Control Officer, Dr. Jeevani Samarajeeva, to tell us in brief about her story from the health perspective. Thank you, Ms. Gayani. She has presented one of our successful story of TB case management, which was in the 2020. Uh, at the 2020, she was 18 years old, school girl from Aranagangula and Aranagangula, Polonarua. Uh, she has been suffering from cough for about two months duration, later associated with the fever. Uh, she has visited many clinicians at the private sector. Luckily seen by a consultant respiratory physician at the private sector on uh, 6th of March 2020. Same day admitted to the General Hospital for an hour. And on, addition, uh, on admission, in addition to the cough and fever, she has lots of weight, loss of appetite, vomiting and diarrhea for one day duration. Uh, her past medical history and surgical history was uneventful. No history of allergy. Uh, social history, she's schooling and lived with parents. On examination, she, she was febrile, uh, 104 uh, Celsius Fahrenheit. Pulse rate was 100, uh, 194. And sputum for gene expert, uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis detected very low and uh, later uh, shows sputum for uh, LJ media was positive. Hematology referral was done, severe bacterial infection and iron deficiency anemia detected. 
microbiology referral done and IV antibiotic optimization. With the time, even the treatment, her DCS dropped up to three. So transfer to the National Hospital Candy for specialized ICU care. There she were for about five days duration and diagnose and manage for the pulmonary TB and TB meningitis. CSF gene expert, microbacterium tuberculosis detected, detected medium. So retransfer the patient to uh, General Hospital Polonaru, but with the treatment fever is still was persistent. So disseminated TB with secondary infection suspected or disseminated TB with persistent form of TB or uh, TB, disseminated TB with resistance, another organism more underlying lymphoma suspected. So discuss with the consultant at uh, NHRD and transfer to the NHRD valisera. So there, she was more than one month were there. So clinically improved and activities of the daily living was improved. And uh, discharge and uh, send patient to the district test clinic for the further follow-up. At the district test clinic, Polonarua continue the treatment and complete a treatment for a one, one year duration. Close contact was screened, no one were positive and no index case were found. So ultimately we can do the cure on, uh, for the patient on 29th of April after one year of the treatment. So problem faced during the management, she has got drug induced hepatitis Social problem, mainly school absence. She has to wait in the hospitalization more than three months duration. It was multidisciplinary contribution, consultant respiratory physician, consultant cardiologist, consultant hematologist, consultant neurologist, consultant microbiologist at the General Hospital Polonaru and the District Test Clinic Polonaru, National Hospital Candy and NHRD Valisera. So this is Jainis' journey. So miracle is Miss Jaini was able to sit for the GCS A level 2021 in Math Stream and now currently engaged in future studies. Uh, early treatment save life as this patient was started on the treatment on clinical grounds. Collaboration between clinical and programmatic entities always contributing to achieve the success in managing TB. So take home messages, uh, early clinical suspicions of TB and investigation and early treatment will save the life. Thank you. महात्मेटा जीवनी समर जीव महात्मियता ये संधार सहायोगी लबादी में टा वैद्यामाली सेना ना एक महात्मियता आराधना कर सिद्धिम। Thank you very much uh, all for that wonderful event. Next, we are moving to another important step in our agenda that is the launching of the newsletter to commemorate the World TB Day. For this important event, 
May I cordially invite Dr. Ms. Donali Rajapaksha, consultant community physician, to and the deputy director of the National Program for Tuberculosis Control and Chest Diseases, Dr. Ms. Nirupa Pallavatta, to officially hand over the hard copies of the newsletters to the head table. Thank you all. Uh, now, may I cordially invite the chief guest for this important event, the additional Secretary Public Health Services, Ministry of Health, Dr. Lakshmi Sisomatunga. And followed by that, uh, we will be having the, our song once again. So I think the technical issues have been sorted out. So we'll call upon Madam to deliver your speech over to you, Madam. Thank you. Hi, Bowen. Deputy Director of this campaign, um, all the specialist medical officer, representative from colleges, medical officers, all other. Um, representatives from other categories of health, stakeholder departments represented here, parents, schools, students, any media person who are present here, and ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Actually, I wanted to say good morning, but Due to equally important matter, I could not be here. But anyway, I told at the outset that the deputy director uh, that it's better later, but can never. So I wanted to be here because this uh, World TB Day, despite the fact that we commemorate a lot of days during 365 days, are important, but this is very special to the Ministry of Health. And personally to me as the additional secretary of public health services. Because before coming to the country, when you take the world population, what is happening in the world, it affects every country and especially Sri Lanka. So we are doing much better than some other countries. When you take 2020, around 10 million people got affected officially. Actually, one fourth of the world population uh, is affected by tuberculosis, but only a fraction of people manifest or get sick of this disease. But the problem is. Uh, out of this uh, 10 million, uh, around 1.1 million 
birth children. And when you analyze the deaths due to TB, actually for the first time in over a decade, for the first time in the history of the world now, deaths due to TB has been increased in 2020. And this may be underestimated as well because when we faced an epidemic, maybe our detection rate at the global level is also, you know, very much affected and reporting is not so accurate. Still, the, it is very much alarming. And that is why I think, and very timely and very appropriate that invest to NTB and save lives is this year's theme. Every year we have themes, but this is very appropriate. And 2022, when you take, I think, uh, for the first time, uh, also this um, Dr. Robert Tok uh, announced his discovery of uh, this uh, re regarding this bacteria is uh, 1842 or something. I can remember if I faintly remember. It is so about 140 years ago. So this is very, uh, you know, special. This year, when you say invest, uh, not only money, money is very important funding, but uh, we must think of human resources allocated to uh, deal with this very important subject and also modern technology, availability of uh, all modern, mo modern technology uh, to detect. And when I listen to this, our school child, very courageously, she spoke. And at the beginning, we have missed the diagnosis. But finally, we were able to diagnose correctly. Now, coming to Sri Lanka, though our burden is not that to the level of other uh, countries in our region, but we are very worried. So many targets are there. When you take sustainable development goal, uh, they are also, we say by 2030, we should end this. And when you take global TB uh, strategy, that is so, they are also, you say, at least 80% of burden should not be there. So many targets, but we can have our own target. History shows that Sri Lanka has done always, when it comes to public health targets, we have achieved our targets long before the WHO dates. So we have to have that in mind. At this particular moment, I want to really appreciate our program, national program for tuberculosis control and chest diseases of our country uh, for wonderful service despite COVID. I know so many things we ex they expected could not be done, but they were continuing their services even during the pandemic. Uh, I usually review our programs at least every six months, despite COVID. And uh, I was really pleased despite the problems they continued. And we have very good stakeholders, especially our respiratory physicians and other consultant community physicians and pediatricians, physicians, we get together and we have a TB commission, very much stakeholder activities are going on. And at this, on this uh, very important day, I want to give the message to the national program that we must have our estimates revisited 
because whatever we do it it says and it is estimated that only 60-65% we diagnose right um, maybe the things are have been changed due to COVID but still earlier it was sort of stagnating like always it was said that 60-65% is diagnosed so we must have properly we don't want to hide anything we want to do the correct thing and uh, I have very much hope on this national program that we will achieve our targets within next three to four day years without waiting till 2030. If we have a very targeted program with our all stakeholders, we'll be able to achieve our targets. Before concluding, I want to say a few words in Sobasha also, because of our children. ශක්තිය අද අපිට අසන්න ලැබුණා අර කුඩා දියණියගේ කතාව ඒන් අපි බොහෝ පණිවිඩ ලබා ගත්තා මං හිතන්නේ අද දවසේ ඉන්න තිබෙන තිබුවා වූ ප්‍රබලම පණිවිඩය වෙන්නේ නැති ඇය විසින් පැවසුවා පළමුව කීප දෙනෙක් ගාවට ගියා අපි ගොඩක් හොඳට වැඩ කරන අමාත්‍යංශයක් නමුත් අපි දන්නවා අපේ දුරලකමුත් ඒ පුද්ගලික වෛද්‍යවරියෙක් වේවා රජේ රෝහලක වෛද්‍යවරියෙක් වේවෝ වේවා විශේෂඥ වෛද්‍යවරුක් වේවා සමහර විට එය හඳුනා ගැනීමට බැරි වුණා ඒ නිසා අපි ඒක හොඳින් මතක තියා ගන්නවා අපි ඒ ගැන තමයි අපේ මේ ජාතික මේ ශ්‍රේය රෝග මර්ධන වැඩසටහන හැමතිස්සෙම මේක අමතක නොවන රෝගයක් ලෙස අපේ වෛද්‍යවරුන් අතරේ අපේ ජනතාව අතරේ නිතර නිතර සිහි ගන්වන්න අපි කටයුතු කරන්නේ අපි ඉංග්‍රීසියෙන් කියනවා මේ not to be a forgotten disease කියලා මොකද ඒ දවස්වලත් එක්ක බලනකොට මේ රෝගය දකින්නට ලැබෙන්නේ නැහැ සමහර වෛද්‍යවරු ඇති කවදාවත් දැකලත් නැති ඉස්සර කාලෙත් එක්ක බලනකොට නමුත් මේක තවමත් තිබෙනවා වෙන රටවල් හා සසඳන කල අපේ රටේ රෝගීන් සංඛ්‍යාව අඩු වුණත් තවමත් අපි හඳුනාගත නැති යම් රෝගීන් සංඛ්‍යාවක් සිටිනවා අපිට ඕනේ හැම දෙනාම හඳුනාගෙන ඒ අයට සම්පූර්ණ ප්‍රතිකාරය දීලා මෙය මේ ක්ෂය රෝගයක් නැති ශ්‍රී ලංකාවක් බවට පත් කරන්න අපි සමහර ලෙඩ වලට අපි එහෙම ළඟා කරගෙන තිනවා මෑතකදී අපි Malaria වෙන තුර ශ්‍රී ලංකාවක් කියන තත්ත්වයක් ලබා ගත්තා. ඉතින් ඒ වගේ එවැනි මහජන සෞඛ්‍ය ජයග්‍රහණයක් තරා යන වැඩසටහනක් මේක කෙසේ හෝ ඔබ ප්‍රබල පණිවිඩයක් දුන්නා එම දියණිය සියලු දේවල් අපිට හම්බුනේ මට හම්බුනේ නොමිලේ ඒ වාසනාව මේ ලෝකේ හැමෝටම නැහැ. අපි ගොඩක් ලොකු අපි පොසත් රටක් නෝනා ඔය වර එක එක වර්ගීකරණය අනුව අපි සමහර දේවල් අතින් පොසත් අපි නිදහස් සෞඛ්‍ය සේවයක් පවත්වාගෙන යන රට ඒ වගේම කෙනෙක්ගේ තරාතිරමක් නොබලා ඇතැම් දේවල් ඇත්තටම සියලු දේවල් නොමිලෙන දැන් උදාහරණයක් වශයෙන් මැලේරියාව තමන්ට එය පරීක්ෂා කරගන්න ඕන නම් එයත් නොමිලේ දැන් සමහර දේවල් පිටරට යන විට මුදල් ගෙවලා අපි කරගන්න ඕනි. නමුත් අපි සෞඛ්‍ය අමාත්‍යංශයේ ශ්‍රී ලංකාවේ සෞඛ්‍ය සේවය අපි තැම් දේවල් වලට විශේෂ ප්‍රමුඛතාවයක් දීලා තිනා පුද්ගලික අංශයේ අයටද 
ඇතම් දේවල් අපි නොමිලි ලබා දෙනවා ඒ ඇයි අපිට ජනතාවගේ සෞඛ්‍ය ඉතා වැදගත් නිරෝගීමත් ශ්‍රී ලංකාව ඉතාමත් වැදගත් නිසා ඒ නිසා ඕනාට වැඩි කතා කිරීමට මම බලාපොරොත්තු වෙන්නේ නැහැ මේ දුවා දරුවන් ගොඩක් කල්ලින්දලා ඇවිල්ලා ඇති දැන් කුසගිනිත් ඇති කෙසේ වුණත් ගොඩක් සන්තෝෂ වෙනවා මේ අද දවසේ ජයග්‍රහණය කරපු අයත් කතාව කරපු දියණියත් ගේ කතාවත් අසන්න ලැබීම ගැන ඒ වගේම නැවත වරක් මේ දිනය නිකන් අහකට යන්න නොදී ප්‍රබල පණිවිඩයක් ජනතාව දැනුවත් වීම මේ ආකාරයෙන් සියලු දෙනාගේ සහභාගිත්වයෙන් මෙසේ සිදු කිරීම ගැන මගේ ප්‍රශංසාව නැවතත් මේ ජාතික වැඩසටහනේ අධ්‍යක්ෂක ඇතුළු සියලුම දෙනාටම සහ අපිට අපිත් එක වැඩ කරන සියලුම වෛද්‍යවරුන් හා අනිත් සෞඛ්‍ය කණ්ඩායම් වලට ස්තුතිය පළ කරමින් අපි සැවම එක්වි මේ රෝගය කිසිම පිළිකුලක් නොදක්වා මේ හැකි ඉක්මනින් සංවිලා ඉන්න අයගෙන් මෙය රෝග විනිශ්චය කර සම්පූර්ණ ප්‍රතිකාර ලබා අපේ රටේ ජාතික ඉලක්කය එනම් ක්ෂය රෝගෙන් තොර ශ්‍රී ලංකාවක් කරා යාමට අපි සැමට අවශ්‍ය ශක්තිය ධෛර්යය ලැබේවායි හිත සිතින් ප්‍රාර්ථනා කරමි මගේ වචන ස්වරපේ අවසන් කරනවා ස්තුතියි Thank you, dear madam, for that uh, enriched overview. Okay, then uh, we are moving to the last item of the agenda before the vote of thanks. Without further ado, let me invite Dr. Mrs. Chinta Karunasekara, consultant microbiologist of National Hospital for Respiratory Diseases, Valisara. Over to you, madam, for the topic on new advances in TB diagnosis. A very good afternoon to you all. So it's my pleasure to deliver this uh, presentation uh, in this uh, audience. So I'll be talking on new advances in TB diagnosis. So as you know, all you know of the effective management of TB relies on the rapid diagnosis, rapid detection of drug resistant and prompt initiation of effective treatment. So all TB patients uh, deserve fast and accurate diagnosis of TB as well as the accurate drug accessibility testing. So, Uh, early diagnosis of TB and universal access to DST is, uh, is have been included in the NTB strategy. So according to the WHO policies, so, so molecular diagnosis are in front in the diagnosis of TB. Uh, so the molecular WHO recommended rapid diagnostic test has come, have come into play Yeah, with the diagnosing of TB in early stages. Also, at least uh, trypampazine resistance is uh, implicated in all, most all patients and some other DST as well in trypampazine resistant patients. So according to the rapid diagnostic update in 2021, so the Diagnostic tests, mostly NETS, uh, that is nucleic acid amplification tests are divided into uh, three, uh, three groups, uh, so class of tests. So it's depending on the complexity of the test. It could be moderately complexity or maybe low or, or else high complexity. So basically it's, uh, it's molecular diagnostic test is encouraged with this era. 
So diagnostic test is divided into initial test for diagnosis with or without DST. So, uh, and uh, the follow-on test of diagnosis test is mainly with the extended drug testing. So initial test for diagnosis of TB is uh, done by expert machines and true nut and other molecular um, moderately complexity automated nets and uh, without drug uh, resistant loop mediated isothermal amplification lateral for lipoalbumin analysis and uro urine lipoalbumin analysis can be done so Regarding the follow-up diagnostic test, uh, Lyme probe assays uh, play, comes into play, and uh, the, uh, also expert XDR assays and some other high, te high technologies, the, uh, high complexity nets and next generation sequences ha have come into play. So in the WHO recommends the rapid techniques as the initial test of diagnosing in patients who are having TB and uh, also uh, by they are by they are trying to minimize the um, delaying uh, starting appropriate treatment. So we all familiar with the Lyme probe assays for detection of resistance of ribampicin and isoniazide. And uh, so with the uh, fluoroquinone and second line injectable agents as well. Initial test for diagnosis of TB can be done by expert rifampicin assay, expert MTB rif assays, so which is available in um, at Vassara Laboratory and other districts as well. So it is uh, it is very um, convenient and uh, uh, very easy to perform test when compared to conventional phenotypic test DST and culture methods. So gene expert is basically a very um, convenient uh, test uh, with an, uh, a real time application PCR. So uh, with uh, the time uh, time to result is less than two hours. So it can be used for uh, patient with adults, uh, patient with pulmonary TB. So uh, adults and children, TB meningitis and expert pulmonary TB as well. So expert ultra assay, we have this uh, test in uh, national level, but it's not uh, widely distributed all over the island. So it has improved sensitivity when compared to previous gene expert assays. Expert ultra assay is also recommended as an initial diagnostic test for TB and for the de detection of repampicin resistant in adults and children. True nut, MTB, MTB plus and MTB RIF DXSS are also recommended as the first line uh, diagnosis test because of uh, the, the low complexity and the very convenient uh, machines. It can be freely available all over the country, but uh, this is uh, this is not a test usually practicing in our country, but our neighbor country, India, is doing the true net uh, testing. Compared uh, with the MTB RIF uh, DXSS and uh, true net MTB MTB plus assays, first the sample should be uh, detect should be detect positive with the true net MTB and MTB plus. Thereafter, that sample should be uh, proceeded into the MTB. Ref DX assays to uh, identify the repampicin sensitivity. So moving into moderate complexity automated nets, uh, there are several tests available. Here I have compared a uh, uh, few tests, four tests which are um, which have been recommended by WHO for initial testing. So most are nets, almost all are nets with very turn, low turnaround time. So, and here the uh, special uh, thing about these tests are that the number of sample per run is relatively high compared to, uh, compared to a new, the available gene expert machine. T 
TB lamp can be used as the initial diagnosis of TB, but there is no way of testing drug resistance at the same time. It's a TB lamp is a commercially available molecule assay. And it's a manual procedure, but it can be replaced for the sputum smears in high burden countries. Lateral for liver albinum and an assay also another diagnostic test. Uh, um, and it's especially important in HIV infected patients. Urine LF, uh, again, uh, lipoalbinoma lipo and assay is a kind of antigen test in the urine. So uh, it uh, it's can be used uh, in active TB diagnosis. So, like is put a microscopy urine. <laughs> LF lamb also lacks sensitivity uh, and there is no clue about the antibiotic resistance, but it's a, uh, it's a good uh, point of care test. So uh, regarding the diagnostic test, now we have discussed about the initial test for diagnosis. Uh, and so moving into follow on test diagnostic test, it's uh, mainly uh, regarding the drug te sensitivity testing. Line probe assay, first line and second line, we can use for further testing of drug resistance. Line probe assay is a family of DNA strip based test, detect mutation associated with drug resistance. First line line probe assays uh, detect resistance to rifampicin and isoniazide. Uh, this test is available at national level. So there's a, there's a DNA extraction and uh, amplification and reverse hybridization post process. So as the name implies, uh, the, there are probes developing in this strip. So the, using these probes, we can uh, detect the rifampicin and isoniazide resistance. Second line LPA is a, uh, is, uh, it's another developed test uh, to detect resistance to fluoroquinolone and amikacin. So it is for mainly for the MDR patients. So other than that, there are two, uh, two more tests should is being used for drug sensitivity testing. So expert XDR assay and genoscore PSNMI TB2 assay. So we are looking forward to establish the expert XDR assay at national levels because um, it can be used to detect a resistant to isoniazide, fluoroquinolone, ethambutol, and other second line injectable drugs. Unlike uh, TB, uh, other gene expert assays, so they are, we need separate uh, gene expert machine to run this uh, ex expert XDR assay, 10 color assays, a gene expert instrument is needed for this test. So other diagnostic test is the, the, uh, the gene score, PSNMIT TB test is not available, but it's, it's basically similar to Lyme probe assay. At the, but it uses large number of hybridization probes to cover the full, um, full gene of the base pairs. So it's a, uh, it's a bit, bit, little bit cumbersome to read uh, all 48 probes uh, uh, to add because uh, we should avoid errors by reading this. But uh, the sensitivity and specificity is fairly all right. So although some drugs, some drug sensitivity testing and some initial testing has been, have been recommended by the WHO, but, uh, but some tests are discouraged. So such as commercially available serological tests are discouraged because of the inconsistency and the imprecise findings. Also, some tests are, approved only for the specific purposes. 
for example, nets uh, such as expert uh, pimepicin and expert ultra and true nut assay are not recommended for the monitoring of the response to the treatment. It's not recommended. But uh, for the initial diagnosis, molecular test is, testing is play a very important role. So what about the interferon gamma release in assays? So, Low and middle income countries, we can use uh, IGRAS as, uh, to detect latent TB, but net, not for the active TB detection. Uh, anyway, the phenotypic can genotypic uh, test uh, comparing. So, when comparing uh, phenotypic and genotypic tests, all the phenotypic tests are, uh, tests are a bit. Uh, difficult and it's a time constraint and all that, but still uh, phenotypic tests should be carried out for, for further information. So, so with the new era, so new drugs have come into play and the, the definition of drug resistant TB have changed. So now, uh, so uh, the XDR TB defined as the TB caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis strains that fulfill the definition of X, uh, MDR ribavirin resistant TB and that are also resistant to any fluoroquinolone and at least one additional group pay drugs such as bedaculin and linosolin. So you can see that bedaculin and linosolid uh, have been included in the group pay drugs. So to decide whether it's a XDR, so there's a need for doing pediculin and university testing. So that, that, that can be done by phenotypic DST, um, but uh, it's um, not much established in our country. So as I said earlier, so as, of, uh, as a referent standards, phenotypic DST is still should, add, should be for form. So moving into more sophisticated testing. So DNA sequencing using next generation sequencing ha has come into play. So it's a promising method for rapid detections. It's based on DST. Uh, DST could reduce the need for a phenotypic DST, but uh, there's, a, um, there's a high demand for technology. Next generation sequencing is the application both targeted next generation sequencing assays for detecting drug resistant TB directly from sputum specimen have been described now. Dplex uh, MIC TB assay is one of that. So that, that kit can detect uh, many resistant genes at once for many drugs. But uh, this uh, NGS system have a lot of uh, technologies, and uh, it's, uh, but it's still worthwhile worth to establish at least in uh, reference laboratories. Even though uh, we are fighting against the TB, there are, uh, there, are current, there are gaps in the current knowledge. Molecular basis for resistant for, for the newer medicine is not completely determined, such as bedaculin, clofacimil, linosolid, and delaminin. So, I also understand the reason for discordant between the phenotypic and genotypic DST result is not fully understood. Uh, the relative contribution of heterosisitone also to yet to be yet to be established. So there are new products are coming by day by day. The nano TB drug resistant assays uh, produced in UK has come into place, but yet to be um, obtained the WHO recommendation. So placement of new diagnostic tests in a laboratory is not a simple task. So that diagnosis test should be implemented, uh, should be accurate test and should be provided the timely result to clinician to take their decisions and should be justified based on the, their needs and be quality assured and reliable and reproducible. So considering all these factors, so uh, diagnostic test has to be implemented. Uh, however, um, in different levels, we can 
still establish certain diagnosis tests. In peripheral levels, we can establish less sophisticated uh, user friendly test. For the intermediate levels, uh, some kind of uh, molecular testing even we can introduce. For the central reference level, so uh, more sophisticated genome sequencing we can establish. So this is the WHO algorithm for diagnostic of a TB. So it's mainly um, towards molecular testing and biomarker testing rather than waiting for a conventional uh, culture and DST. So the new diagnosis players and important role in TB screening, TB testing and TB treatment. So it's a time to uh, upgrade the, our diagnostic facilities from conventional method to molecular diagnostic in order to uh, reduce the um, time to initiate treatment and to, uh, to have a better treatment for drug resistant TB patients. Thank you very much. राजपक्ष Good afternoon, uh, distinguished guests. Uh, it is a great privilege to propose a word of thanks on this special occasion as the activity coordinator of this event. I'm not taking much time. Uh, so, uh, so I, on behalf of the National Program for Tuberculosis uh, Control and uh, Chest Diseases, extend a very uh, heartly word of thanks to Additional Secretary Public Health Services, Dr. Lakshmi Somatunga, Deputy Director General Public Health Services, Dr. S. M. Arnold, our speakers, Dr. Neranjan Disanayaka, Vice President of College of Pulmonologists, Dr. Chinta Karna Sekara, Consultant Microbiologist, Velisara, Dr. Onali Rajapaksha, uh, Consultant Community Physician, uh, NPTCCD, and Dr. Surantha Pereira, Vice President, hmm, SLMA, and the other council members of uh, Sri Lanka Medical Association for gracing the, this occasion with their knowledge and expertise and uh, for the collaboration of this event. Uh, and also I would like to uh, give my sincere thanks uh, to the staff of NPTCCD, the director, Dr. Hemant Hera, the deputy director, Dr. Nirupa Pallavatta, uh, consultant community physician, Dr. Nali Rajapaksha, and uh, consultant in health informatics, Dr. Pramil Lianake, acting CCP, Dr. Sajani Nadika uh, for uh, supporting me. Uh, especially, I want to thank my colleague medical officers uh, who stood by me all the time and uh, to uh, make this event a success. And uh, other staff of the NPTCCD uh, health education officer who uh, uh, su supported me all the time. I also would like to express our sincere gratitude to the uh, to Dr. Ravini Karnatilaka, uh, the president of uh, College of Pulmonologists, who, uh, and other uh, members of the other colleges, and WHO officials, uh, 
chief uh, mo uh, medical office of health cmc other stakeholders uh, who officials for gracing this occasion our special thanks to ms jayani dharmasena uh, and uh, dr jeevani samaravira dtco uh, all the way from polonnaruwa uh, and uh, the uh, and we despite all the uh, difficulties uh, you managed to come here uh, we honor your presence and uh, dear daughter jayani uh, we wish you all the best and congratulations for your success in all the aspects of life and i want to thank dr dinesh dasanayaka for uh, for his technical inputs in making the presentation and uh, for the Uh, College of Pulmonologists, Dr. Ashant Pereira and his team for the wonderful song, and also I want to thank all the students and parents who came today uh, to uh, raise this occasion. And also I would like to thank all the participants of uh, art exhibition as well. And uh, I want to thank the media personnel who supported all the time, free of charge, and. Uh, Uh, all the and uh, our uh, sole uh, sponsor KIU International University uh, for their support in making this event a success so i hope uh, mm, let's hope to end tb uh, and create a tb free sri lanka by 2035 thank you all Thank you, Diyamari, on behalf of uh, NPTCCD for your wonderful job, and let us all uh, pay a round of applause for Amali as the activity coordinator for coordinating all the activities. And without further ado, we would uh, like to invite you for the lunch arranged in the outside uh, lobby area, and uh, the national program for Nas International TB Day two thousand twenty two. is here by ajay thank you very much for your kind participation